Hello. Hello, Danielita. How are you, Kokiro? How are you? I'm happy to be here. Yes, very happy to be here today. Yes. Um, um, we are supporting this wonderful um, initiative that Broko, Stan Prokopenko, has uh, in support of the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. He's been working super hard at it for the uh, last four days. Today is the last day of the uh, fundraiser. And he asked us if we could be a part of it in some way. Um, it's a little bit easier for people, um, artists that are in the West Coast with him or artists that are in the U.S. But uh, for us, we will gladly support him by doing this um, this live stream. And I yeah. thought about something. Um, there is going to be a link. If you want, uh, you could go to my email. I have that link or I could send it to you. I could send it. Well, no, good. If, if you can go to my email, I have the link there. Okay. And we can pin that as a comment. So for the people that want to donate, um, they oh, just have to look at the pinned comment, uh, follow the link, and um, there and are donation tabs um, in there. And you can help with, you know, as much as you want. Um, let me take a look at these. Yeah, there's like $10 to $5,000 donation. Uh, if you have the ability to donate 5,000, that's amazing. You know, if it's tough for you and you can donate 10 bucks, that's amazing too. I think any help is, you know, big help. So, um, I was, I was thinking about something. Uh, we are going to do a painting, one of our, you know, paintings as we do on our daily paintings today. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was thinking about it. We could, uh, donate this painting. And Absolutely. we could do it in a way that's kind of cool for us. Um, Stan uh, doesn't have to worry about this part because what we can do, Danny, if if you think this is uh, this works, I think it's super simple. But if people go to uh, Broco's page and donate, mm -hmm. I'm sure they're going to get like, um, you know, like a little screenshot. They're going to get something that says, here's your invoice or here's your you like donation, um, uh, little email mm -hmm. uh, confirmation. So whomever donates the most screenshot. Yeah. Can send a screenshot to you. To my Instagram. So to your Instagram. Daniela O C M P. Yeah. And we're gonna be repeating this yeah, through the video. Throughout. So whomever don't makes the largest donation gets the uh gets the painting. We'll worry about the uh the shipping ourselves. Don't worry about it. We'll ship anywhere, we'll FedEx anywhere in the world. That's up to us, so you guys don't have to worry about it. And we'll share it uh when? Uh, at the end of the stream. So okay. this is this is just for our stream. Now, the cool part is this is not trying to push somebody to say $5,000 I won. I mean, that's amazing because you're supporting a, a really good cause. Um, no, no. You know, maybe people here, they don't have a lot of money. That's totally cool. So maybe, you know, if people are donating five bucks, you know, 10 bucks, maybe you make a $50 donation and the painting is yours. And, you know, we'll send it to you anywhere, you know, in the world. So, yeah. So remember to send it to my Instagram. Yeah. If you donate and we'll be checking that up at the end of the session. Yeah. Danny's going to keep um, keep an eye out for those um, messages. Yeah. And like we said, you know, no shame. If it's like a $10 donation that wins, we will gladly send this painting for whomever donated 10 bucks. Yeah. This is not like shaming people that can't donate more you know, a ton of money. No, no, no. This is actually being super grateful and super thankful for anyone that can help. So yeah, it's just a way of us trying to contribute. Yes. So, so. check out, um, check out the uh, link that Danny uh, posted pinned already. And, um, and yeah, and we'll, we'll be checking on, on your messages uh, throughout the uh, video. So mm, what are we going to do? Wait, because that's the, uh, yes, I'm sorry. Wait, Go ahead. I started. Uh, <laughs> Liad said, time to donate a dollar and bust out Photoshop. No. <laughs> no, no, no. We, this I is, mean, uh, we, we, th these are like, you know, these are donations. Yeah. And um, as Liad said, I know you can verify it on the back end. So, right, right. Yeah. I'm going to, I can ask, I could double check with Proko really fast. You know, we don't, we're not going to ship the painting today. We're probably going to ship it a week from now when exactly. we get all the permits. So, in and a week, we can get, Broco to verify if, you know, this user donated this amount. And if it but, wasn't legit, uh, we'll see the second exactly. biggest donation and uh, like exactly. that. Exactly. And so on. Exactly. So, on. 
So, yeah, yeah, no, Le Liad said, I was just joking. No, no, no I know, Liad, but it was like, a great thing that you said, because, I mean, it's not like we're going to see $1 million dollars and we're going to believe it and just ship it. It's yeah. going to take time. So we, of course, are going to do like a double check to know that people are uh, really wanting to contribute. Yeah, and our community is like good vibes. Exactly. Um, we're not saying we're free of problems. I think, you know, everyone here, you know, we're all kind of broken, but... I think that I think that one thing that we are is respectful. We're exactly. honest. We're good vibes. So I hope we all like understand that this is this is just you know this is something that we're doing and we can handle us ourselves like with respect. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna rely on like the honor system for everyone. Of course, we're gonna double check, but um, but yeah. Again, the, the, you know, the purpose of this is not to do, not to send the painting. We've done that, you know, hundreds of times. The purpose in here is to say, hey, for this stream, let's just concentrate on, you know, this particular moment in our planet's life where tons of people are suffering. And even if it's something that is foreign to you, I mean, we are across the globe. We, we are a war-ridden country. Our country, a different type of war, but our country has been in war for over 60 years it's a civil war that has been going on for you know what seems to be forever and um so if even if you don't quite understand what's going on um even if if it seems like it's something that doesn't quite impact your life um i'm sure that there are you know emotions that are surrounding what is happening right now that you do understand and this is not about choosing one war over another or one war ridden country over another or say or saying that one country um, weighs more than another or that the object of, re of our attention should be focused on this one particular country and not on the 20, 30, 40, 50 other countries that, you know, are suffering from the same, um, you know, disease that is war. No, no, no. This is, you know, nothing. Th the fact that we are just Focusing on this today does not negate that we should be conscious of everything that that ha that happens in in this wonderful planet of ours. So you know, please take that into consideration. Um, so yes, yeah, so I thought we could do something very cool. The the title of the video is understanding influences. You know how how do you deal with you know maybe an artist that you um that you've just looked at for your whole life well but that's not the title of the well video. sort of sort of well not of this video yeah, but yeah, the, yeah. The one that's like, a, oh yeah yeah no 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 the the of our live video it's just you know artist um help ukraine yeah, yeah. artists help ukraine right right but the one that we um promoted through broco's um web and what i proposed to him was how do you deal with influences you know how do you make a painting that's your own but where you're clearly you know, looking at somebody else without being iterative, without saying, oh, I stole somebody else's work or without feeling like you're not part of what you're doing, but it's something that's entirely um, just repeating, echoing that artist that you admire. So for today, I thought it was, um, I thought it was very nice if we could focus on um, Kathy Colvitz, Kathy Colvitz, uh, one, because we just saw some of her, uh, we just saw a show in Spain of a lot of her prints. And I think it did a number, at least on me, but I know Danny also really, really liked it too. Yeah. They were like crazy good yeah, engravings. Yeah, amazing. I, I have this this just natural kind of um, uh, attraction to etching, to any sort of form of etching, because I see every time I think of etching, I think of my mother. And I think of all the sacrifices my mother did to be a graphic artist and how etchings, you know, wood, uh, wood prints, um, they're not super recognized internationally, I feel. Uh, people are still, you know, even though it's this is like ancient, people are still somewhat ignorant of the value of a print. Um, so every time I look at etchings, I, I always remind of how strong my mother, you know, was. Um, in trying to push always and, and trying to educate in a way people, you know, through etching. And, um, and I've always been super grateful, you know, uh, to my mother because etching is, I think when I look back when I was very, very young that she taught me how to etch, 
um, it's the one thing that taught me um, about the practice, about studio practice, because there's no way in hell you can do a good etching without a responsible studio practice. There's no way. So I I have this this natural inclination towards etchings. The the show moved both of us, you know, quite a lot. Yeah. And um, there's nothing, you know, when you think of powerful artists, uh, no one, no one comes close to like uh, Kathy Kolvitz. And uh, her, even though, you know, she she was a pacifist, her and her husband were, you know, publicly pacifists. Um, she actually lived through both uh, world wars, which is, you know, a, a dramatic thing to think that, you know, a person can live, you know, through through those two wars and be impacted terribly by them, as was the case of, of Kathy Kolvitz, because she she actually lost her 18-year-old son uh, in, in World War I. Uh, he was 18. He enlisted, you know, right before the, uh, the war. He actually had to have permission of his parents to enlist because he was considered to be a minor um, at that age. And they you know, vehemently opposed him enlisting, but eventually he was, he convinced them because he was totally convinced about uh, fighting for his country. And he died 10 days into the war. Mm. 10 days into the war, um, Kathy Kolvitz lost her 18 year old son. And what's even harder to deal with um, about her story is that she had done prior to that she had done a bunch of etchings and drawings speaking about, you know, sort of the disasters of war, the weight of war. And um, she was very, you know, she, she was what you could consider like a pacifist revolutionary. She was always interested in, in um, popular revolts, um, particularly those that, that were part of uh, German history. And, um, and her images were so, so powerful. And, and she didn't live through you know them when she was doing the peasant revolt uh the when she was speaking about the great Pe peasant revolt that was like in the 16th century in you know germany so she wasn't trying to you know speak of something that happened you know way way before her time uh but she was speaking about human nature and how you know the poor are just you know taken advantage in in horrendous and horrible ways and and absolutely forgotten. So she took that as a constant. And um, I thought it was very beautiful. If if for this particular um, stream, we could, you know, think about uh, Colvitt's work, uh, think about the impact that she, she has. She's an enormous artist. I think that, you know, right now we for sure, for sure are giving her the attention she deserves. But I think with the coming of the years and, and future generations are going to look back at her and see that there's this power in her that is really quite unmatched in in most of art history. So I think it's really beautiful to showcase her. And for a person like me that has been so deeply impacted by her work, say, okay, I am more of an intimist painter. I paint like everyday life and I paint things that are not so dramatic. That, that's just how I paint. I, I can't force myself to, to say, no, you are a revolutionary. You should be, you know, you know fighting this fight with, with, with art in the mountains of Colombia. Like, you should, you should do this. The truth is, my life has led me elsewhere. But I still believe that you can, you know, paint beautiful things and beautiful messages through, um, you know, through this practice of art. And that you could reach people and you could, you know, hopefully make people stop and think a little bit. And so it is weird for me to try to say, okay, where do we meet? You know, where does this person that had such amount of power speaking about, you know, these popular revolutions um, and me that paints like a paper bag, where do we meet? Because I am so moved by her, but what does that mean? Do I have to turn my whole painting into like a social realist endeavor or or what does that mean do do i how much do i have to sacrifice to to be able to say i am moved by her or i'm impacted by her so i think that you know i i've i've often thought about these things because those are the sort of things that make you believe that maybe you're a lesser painter if you don't maybe you're not 
real if you don't like if you don't follow her same you know route then maybe you can't say that you're moved by her maybe you can't say that you you're impacted by her maybe other people would say well that impact is lost on you because you're not you know you're not being the 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 revolutionary that she wants you to be that she was hoping that you would be and i think that there are different levels to how we can respond to those things i don't think we all have it in us to say, I'm gonna go out and, and fight this fight this way. I'm a super pacifist person. I, I really, I cannot stand any, any shape of violence, any form of violence, I, I cannot. And, and violence where, you know, young people like um, Kathy Kovitz, you know, son at the time, you know, violence that can impact a young person's life just destroys me. Absolutely, absolutely destroys me. I think young people are meant to be in this world to be happy, to be creative, to fall in love, to make dumb mistakes, to learn from them, but not in war, not killing other people. That That's, that's not, you know, that's absolute insanity. So um, I'm always reminded of, you know, to, to answer back with love. You know, when I when I hear those things, I, I always believe that the one thing that I can do is just answer back with sincerity and with love, with absolute love and openness and honesty. And um, and that's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to paint. I'm going to do a painting of Danny, very moody, moody painting, because that I cannot um, undermine or look past. Um, Kathy Colvitt's work is heavy, heavy the air she breathed was heavier than the one I breathe. You know, it was, it's almost as if, she, if you took a breath of her air, I would weigh 20 kilograms more. I would feel it in my back. It, I, I would be like Sisyphus carrying like, you know, the, the air that she, that she would breathe. So I think that I need to be kind of darker, heavier, but there, there needs to be a slither of hope in that darkness, in that kind of heavy, heavy um, atmosphere. So I think that's what we're gonna paint today. Hopefully that makes sense. I was gonna, I was trying to say, okay, but if we're gonna paint something that, that where we are gonna reflect upon warring, con warring countries and, and the suffering that our world currently goes through, um, what am I gonna paint? You know, am I gonna, am I gonna just paint like this fluffy little painting and maybe it, you know, for some people it makes sense, but um, I wanted to see if I could find like an angle for me to um, to understand the painting. So hopefully that that resonates with um, with some of you. So so it's going to be Danny. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of light coming through up top in the painting, uh, but it's like backlit, so it's only going to fall, you know, on her shoulders, top of her shoulders, through her hair. So it's going to be like a rim, nice rim lighting. I'm describing the painting, by the way. And it's going to sound better when I describe it than when I paint it, but <laughs> at least it'll give me something to go for. But there's going to be a beautiful kind of uh, kind of wrangled up uh, rim lighting with her hair um, in here. And then just this very vague notion of, of an expression, I would say. And I'm going to try to see if I can nail those things. And I think that if I can, it's just going to be, it, it's going to have that mood that I'm really looking for that I think reminds me of, of the, um, the weight that I see in, in Kathy Colvitz's uh, work. Does it carry every, every bit of the essence that a Colvitz um, etching or, uh, or woodcut carry or sculpture or charcoal drawing or litho carries? No, of course not, because I will never in my life be the artist that she was, but it doesn't mean that I can't be you know, so impacted by her that I, that I choose to make her part of my life and my path. So let's see, let's, uh, uh, I think that that's pretty clear as to what we're going to do. And, um, I should just get, uh, started here. And if, if people, cause I don't know if there's a lot of people, maybe, maybe, but you know, maybe a lot of people were checking Broco's, um, uh, schedule and maybe they're checking us out for the first time. Um, yeah, welcome. So, Happy yeah, to have you're you welcome. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please check our other videos just so you could get a good sense of what we are. But you're, I think you're, you're going to very quickly know what we're about. Um, and we say we because our painted lives is a joint effort. It's an um, equal, yeah. 
equal uh, rights, equal everything, joint <laughs> effort. Uh, so this is me. Uh, I'm Nicolas Uribe and my partner. I'm Daniela Ocampo. Ooh. Ooh. And uh, we've been uh, with our working with our Painted Lives uh, for the past two and a half-ish years. Yeah. So it's very cool. So, we have yes. a little bit more than 450 videos. What? Yeah. We're past 450? No. No, I don't know. I? I don't know. Nicolás, I, oh my God, I, they, I think I checked. I'm making sorry. Making it up. Making it up <laughs> worst, as you go along. Yeah, worst presentation oh my ever. God. So please let me check again. I want to double check. Now I'm scared. <laughs> I think I have to check uh, from like, another no, account. No, I'm sorry. It was 23 videos. <laughs> 23. I'm so sorry. So um, let's see. Our painted lives. Uh, yeah, 490 videos. 490? So we're missing 10 for 500. What? Yeah. We should do something for the 500. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe at the beginning of the video, just say, hey, 500th video. Ooh, yeah. And let's uh, let's paint and talk about food. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, yeah, we have 490 videos that you can uh, check out. For the first two years, uh, there were edited videos. Uh, we were uploading Monday through Friday. Yeah. Videos. And for, then it of all about went down. No. <laughs> Downhill no. from there. Liet said TikTok dance for five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now we like doing uh streams, and I really like the description that some people has um given to what our streams feel like. What is that? I'm scared. Uh, they say it feels like an open atelier, like a conversation you would have in an art studio. Okay, that's So good. I really like that. Uh, we're always here painting and having conversations, not only around painting, but around everything. Everything, I mean, life. We could, yeah. The life that surrounds painting, I would say. Exactly. So we can end up uh, talking about food, as Nicolas said. Uh, we can end up talking about animals. <laughs> uh, we can rank... <laughs> Um, I art. have no idea where you're going. We can uh, see like top 10 artists oh, Jesus, from Blah. Went with it. So welcome to stay here. If you yeah. want, you can uh, subscribe to our channel. Yeah. Ring the bell. <laughs> yeah. But today... Because we're always here. Yeah. But today I think our focus should be on... You know, helping you know this this beautiful. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so that's... if you forget to to uh, subscribe to our channel, yeah, fine. But if you for, forget to sub uh, forget to uh, subscribe, that's fine. But donate. Yeah. Okay. We will a thousand times uh, take the uh, donation over the subscription. A thousand times. So yeah, for today, don't worry. You don't have to ring the bell. Don't worry. We're gonna. You know, we're going to say that every other day of the week. <laughs> yeah. For today, if you see that link that Danny has on... Um, it's a pinned yeah, uh, comment, and it's also chat. in the description there of go. the video. So it's two places. Find it. Click on it. Donate whatever you can. Anything you can. Exactly. And um, that's super, super cool. And again, um, if you didn't listen to the first part, I just mm. uh, commented here. Yeah. Uh, that this painting is going to be uh, shipped to the person that does the biggest uh, donation to the campaign and sends a proof of it, like a screenshot of the donation to my Instagram, like a DM. We'll be checking that at the end of the session so we can send the painting. We're not fishing for, for followers either. You don't have to follow any of us. You just have to send it. So no, you don't have to follow me we, to we send me a message. We won't check if you're a follower. We, it doesn't matter. So you don't have to follow Danny. You don't have to follow no, me. You just have to donate. You just have to donate. And send you have us a to message. send it because it's the easiest way. Yes. And, For I us, mean, it's, yeah, I thought about it and I was like, well, I can't double check things. I can't send the painting to Proko or I can't. Um, it's going to be like too many steps to do yeah. a bunch of that. It's the easiest way so, for yes, us. So, yes, yes, for, for sure. So... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see if it works. If it doesn't work, then maybe, it's you know, a person too. that donates 10 bucks can get the painting. Yeah. And that's also nice. So, yeah, because we're saying the biggest amount, but maybe if the biggest amount is $10, that would yeah, be awesome. And it's always relative. Awesome you know, 10 too. bucks for somebody is not the same for 10 bucks for somebody else. That's true. So, so yeah, don't ever feel ashamed of that. 
um, helping somebody, helping people is helping people. So there's not, it's not a race. It's not, there's no winners. There's no anything. It's just, this is just like a, a way to say, for us to say thank you. Um, so is it okay if we start saying hi? Yeah, yeah, of course. Eh, Darian Gallardo dice, mm. hola, hola. Hola, Darian. Hola, Darian. También nos está saludando Margo. Hola, Margo, ¿cómo no, estás? No, pero hola, Margo, no. <ríe> eh, ya para mí es hola, Margo, siempre. Eh, así dice, hola, muchachos. Proco más Nicolás Uribe es mi multiverse of madness. <ríe> Él es, un, él es un personaje fantástico. Ha hecho mm. cosas muy buenas para, para la enseñanza virtual, eh, para eh, la um, socialización de la información, para la educación, para las personas que de pronto no pueden ir a, a instituciones más formales. Muy bonito, muy bonito todo lo que él ha hecho por eso. Mm. Homero Salazar dice, buena tarde. Buenas Hola, tardes. Homero, buenas tardes. Uh, Serene, Ke Serene Kelly said hello Hi Serene E-Boy said um hi Hi E-Boy Rosalind said hello this is amazing Thank you Hi Ro Ro, ro oh, no. Just Ro We're yeah, missing please, the other Ro please, please. Hi Ro um, Miguel Fonseca said hello Amazing initiative Hola Miguel Hola Miguel Javi Hav said, happy Friday to all. Saludos. Hola, Javi. Happy to have you here. Uh, Liet said, Nicolás, based on yes, the Liet. description of how you're going to paint Danny, dark and heavy, I'm expecting Danny the Dark Knight. M.M. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Borg, zero, zero. So, oh, Monique. Hi, Monique. How are you? It's Monique said, Exactly. Because I haven't heard you say M M Borg zero zero. zero, zero. Yeah. I always sound like kind of a robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sound I like feel, I always associate Borg with like bot M -M or like. M Borg. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, M M Borg zero zero M -M said. Borg. Sounds great. Uh, you guys are very cool. Oh, thank Everyone you. Everyone here is cool. Thank you, Monique. Everyone here is cool. Mm, tin tin. Hi, tin tin. Tin tin. Go to sleep. How what are, are you? you? So, what are you doing up? So Tintin was God, sending some woman. emojis. Yeah. Happy to have you here, Tintin. This woman knows no sleep. <laughs> uh, Emery Borch mm -hmm. said, Hello, Danny and Nicolas. I'm from Ukraine, and I just wanted to thank you for doing this stream. I've been watching you guys since January 2020. You inspired me to get back into drawing and painting. Oh, that's oh, wonderful. Thank you, Emery. That's so wonderful. Thank you. Um, we hope everyone that you know is doing okay. Uh, hopefully things will get a little bit better with the passing of time. But, um, but thank you so much. And thank you for uh, being with us for uh, so long. Yeah, because that's like OG OPL family. Yeah. Yeah, 2020. Like 2020, January, that's, like, that's first yeah. video. That is that is our very first video. Yeah, so yeah. when you were kind of a... I was a mess. Uh, no, I was going to say camera shy. And a mess. Nah. Yes, always. No. Mm. Oh, the camera shy, I think I'm always going to be. <laughs> For me, it works because I don't. I'm not seeing my face. I'm seeing my hands. My hands don't have to be shy, so... I think nowadays I'm uh, cooler with it. Yeah? Like being on the screen. Yeah. But it was weird when we started the um, live streams. Yes. Because, I mean, I was a mystery. <laughs> oh, th yeah. I always say and that you were channel. my uh, Canadian girlfriend. Yeah. People were like, is she real? Yes. And uh, I was like, yeah, she's real. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, Danny's calling me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, have to, uh, I have to go. Yeah. Uh, but no, now I now tend to. Now everyone knows that, you know, you're real. Yeah. And uh, you get paid to be my girlfriend, and Ay, that's okay. No, terrible joke. Of course, no. Um, Asif said 500 hours As painting if. live stream. <laughs> well, no. 400, 500 videos, and if we're like lowballing it, three hours of video. Well, no, 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 because no. it was like 20 oh, minutes. Oh, 20 minutes. So I'm going to say. With the live stream, we probably bumped up the um, 
the hours to maybe like half an hour or 35, 40 minutes. So how much is 40 minutes by 500? 2,000. Uh, how, mu how much is what? 2,000 minutes. 2,000 no, minutes. If 500 no, wait, five uh, 40, times four, no, 20, 20 times 12, 240 times 20. What? What are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm going to trust what you're doing, but I don't know. Yeah, trust me. Okay. So wait, I, I got lost. Yeah, it's no, 20,000 minutes. Five videos. How much is 20,000 minutes? So 20 by 12, it's going to be 240 each year. By what? two, it's 480. Danny, wait, how wait, much is 20, no, wait. 20,000 minutes? I just want to know wait, wait, like, wait. total time. Wait, wait. Uh, by. Uh, <laughs> what is going on? 20. So it's 9,600 minutes. Uh, so have that number. 9600. Zero, zero. And Why now, wait, 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 wait. And now, I'm uh, uh, my voice by five is uh, invisible here. By 12, by completely two. invisible. Uh, 520. Can, can somebody so help 20 me out? 20,000 minutes. How much is 20,000 uh, minutes? 20 by 3. In hours. So 20,000 20, divided by 60. Let me do this. 20,000 divided by, divided by 60 is 333. Thank you. Uh, 333. There we go. We yeah. have thir we three, have 333 three, three, three. hours. No. Roughly. I was doing it better. Rough, do you remember it, the name? It took me like two number steps. I no. It took me two steps. Mine's going to be more I accurate. I was going to say, you know what? Because I was saying two, like nine, videos are usually nine, like 20 so to 25 minutes. Nine. And because we've done you know, very much less live videos, It they're probably going to bump up our average to 40 minutes, let's say. So if we say 40 minutes on average and we've done, and we're going to do close to 500 videos, that's 20,000. No, you know what I wanted minutes. to do? I wanted 20, to count. So divided by 60. We did 20 videos uh, every month. So 20 by 12, 240 by two, because there were two years. 480 videos of that videos of the, <laughs> of the 490 were um, 20 minutes long. Okay. So that's what I was doing. Oh, and then oh I, 10, I just went with the average though. No. I just averaged it in my head though. So then 10 <laughs> by <laughs> and 9, 600. Okay. Because so actually... according to me, okay. it's 1100. 1100. Uh, no, 11,400 minutes. Oh, so much less than I, what I'm saying. Yeah. How much are you averaging the live videos? 20. No, no, no. The live, the three, live ones. Three, three hours. hours. Yeah. So it can't be by three. So it has to be no, 180. Of course. Uh, yeah, exactly. And how many live videos have we done? No, because according to this, just 10. No, But what? I think that the thing is that, remember, we did, so it said 30 Four hundred and eighty would be so three hundred and thirty-three hours no. of content. Because remember, we started doing non -stop. Monday through Thursday. So you Thursday. can watch for fifteen days, give or take. So more than that. Seventy. Sixteen days straight. Five, so if you're 20, in an island but have good reception, nine, and nine, you're four. aiming for fifteen days of staying alive, uh, you can watch. You know, back to back. Mm -hmm. Um, OPL videos. I think it's more. 333 said, but... hours. So it doesn't matter. It's a ton of uh, content. Okay. So um, <laughs> you're. Uh, I love that you were there, like typing away. Yeah, because I was you trying like to that, remember the meme of the woman with the all the math equations in the back, and you were like, "I got this. I got this." No. I mean, I, I got it, but I'm going to let you think uh, you had it. But... I, don't know. I don't know where you were going. No? You didn't no, understand no, no. what I was doing? Of course. You were trying to be far more specific. Exactly. But for, for years to work, we would need to know exactly how many videos um, were edited. Were edited. Exactly. And, how, you know, and then the rest, you just subtract and then say, okay, that the rest, is the, um, the rest are, are live videos, three-hour live videos. Although... If you want to complicate things further, we, we did, did a, a 24, 24 hour, hour stream. live stream. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's a lot of hours and minutes 
and whatever. So I'm going to say 18 days on a deserted island. That's how much content you're getting in our painted lives. 18 days. Mm. If you manage to stay alive and like drink water from the coconuts and uh, fish some something for 18 days, we got you covered. <laughs> uh, We're there with you. We are your rock till the ship arrives. Wood Spirit 100 said, that's my feeling too. I don't know uh, towards what, because the <laughs> comment was a lot ago. <laughs> uh, towards our math. Maybe he's like, that's my feeling too, towards the 330. I mean, I hours. was just trying to be uh, more accurate. You just went with average, but. Yeah. I mean, well, you do you. Well, for the sake of like, you know, good content. I'm sorry, but I don't sacrifice math. No. Mathematics. It it sounded weird, but yeah. Yeah, but the bad thing is that the test, you know, the time ran out and you didn't answer the test. No, I answered. How like much? 13, you said uh, like 1,100 hours. No, minutes, because I was saying minutes. No, because 1,100 minutes, it's... 20, 20, yeah, because I was doing it by minutes. No, I do 180 minutes. My average minutes. gave us 20,000 minutes. Far better than eleven than eleven hundred. Yeah, because your average wasn't as accurate. No, no, no. I think I'm. I think I'm close. Because mm. to bump up an average of you know two hundred and almost three hundred videos or three hundred and something videos, um, to bump it up three hundred and something videos that were twenty five minutes long. Let's say twenty whatever minutes on average. To bump that average up with you know, less videos up to like 40 minutes. That's a lot. I feel. I want to see 490, but I want to see if we're able to. So know we'll do this. How many are lives? We'll do this because this is completely unnecessary, but you know, we're already here, so we might as well. Uh, for next, for Monday, we will, we will uh, Bring say. You the exact number. Well, as of close hours. as yeah, as close as, as we can, I feel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As close as we can. And we'll see. I like I'm going to commit to my 30, you know, 333 hours. Mm. I'm going to commit cuz that's I, I I know. I'm I'm just like very quickly making tons of assumptions, but I don't think I'm super off on that. But I'm going to commit to that and we'll see how how far I was. So, uh, Rosalind was saying that is the description of the painting sounds very cool. Can't wait. Um, me neither. Uh, Sergi, Hopefully, it won't suck. Sergi was saying, oh, está diciendo, hola, nuevo día, nueva pintura. Claro que sí, Como Sergi. siempre. Camila Ogorman dice, hola. Hola, Camila, estuve viendo, eh, empecé el curso tuyo de doméstica. Y vi que nombraste a Nicolás. Uh, y mostraste el libro de Our Painted Life. What? No, muy mal. Sí, no, muy, muy linda, dice que muy mal. Tratando ahí de ganar favores. ¿Qué? Favores nosotros que le pedimos. Le que debemos le todo pedimos. a Camila. Sí, sí, sí. Eh, sí, y dijo, pinta a su novia y yo, uh, a mí, <laughs> a mí. Cody Winicky said, a good day for painting, happy Friday. Hi, Cody. How yes. are you? Weather here, I think it's turning like super, super gray right now. As per usual. Yeah. But uh, but it's always a good day for painting. Mm. Let's see. Uh, you know, can I tell you something that's very weird? Yeah. As per usual is a very formal thing to say. Like, people don't usually say as per usual. I use it a lot. You know who the two people that I've heard in my life say as per usual are? Uh, my, my father and you. Yeah? Yeah. My father used to say as per usual. Yeah? Now, every time he said it, he, he sounded like, like a monocle <laughs> was growing, you know, out of thin air and a, like a top hat. And he was just buying, like, stuff with Monopoly money. <laughs> And but every time it's like as per usual, and I was like, Dad, what it like? What is that English thing? Like, don't say that. Nobody says that. 
And I remember when I met you and you said, as per usual, I'm like, okay, the universe is weird. Yeah, because also I, I remember- I dating my dad. <laughs> yeah, because I had uh, other sayings. You have, you One have that's a, the weirdest la época del ruido saying. In yeah. Spanish. And You're you were so like- so old. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm the, of course I'm the older one between us two, but there's stuff that you say. Again, that saying in Spanish, it's like a 1900 saying that nobody says except my dad who loved to talk about stuff that nobody cared about. And um, and I remember when you said, oh, es más viejo que la época del río. I, I was like, what? I've always heard that, like growing yeah. up. So I just use it. I think that like when you said it, I just realized like, oh, maybe that's why people didn't get it when I said it. Nobody, like, I think as my a dad, 10 year old, my dad had to explain to me that there was, you know, I don't know, maybe you could Google it, but there was a time, but let me see how much I remember. But there was, yeah, you've told me, yeah, I, but this is, I don't even know what date could this be. I'm, so I'm guessing early Google 20th century. I'm guessing, as per usual. I'm guessing early 20th century. I'm going to guess early 20th. So beginning of 1900s or like 1910s, so something it was... like that. So don't, don't tell me. And, It 1910, was, you said? Yeah, something like that. I would. I'm guessing people had to be ignorant, so I'm guessing like it has to be, it has to be like a hundred years ago. But and I'm saying people had to be ignorant because what happened was that there was 1910, you said. Yeah, maybe. So what happened was that there was this moment where, you know, people heard this sound, like this huge sound. It like all over like everyone heard this like rumbling sound everyone heard it and nobody knew what had happened nobody and it's a mystery till now till today because yeah. nobody knew what the hell caused this enormous sound that every absolutely everyone heard so for something like that to happen which i'm always very skeptical i'm always feeling like okay that happened like in a small town it's like four people heard it So I'm guessing like the city wasn't that big and I'm guessing people <laughs> weren't super educated. You know, it's to me, that's like a ghost story. So, so, yeah. so let, let, me, me feel let me know your if gaps. I was like super off. So it happened here in, in Bogota. Bogota. Yes. So it wasn't a tiny, I mean, it was well, smaller. It was no, smaller I mean, it was small. What Bogota is now. Because it happened in 1687. Oh what? 9 of March, the 9 of March. Of 1687. Okay, we were like huts back then. We were Santa Fe de Bogotá. We were huts. Back then. We were like 12 huts. So it says that at Straw 10 p.m. Okay. At 10 p.m., an apocalyptic and <laughs> weird sound. I'm trying like to translate as I read. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, ruined the calm of all the savanna. Okay. The yeah, because we are, we are in a uh, savanna. Exactly. The sound extended for about 15 minutes. 15? Yeah. What? Which caused a lot of terror and confused uh, habitants. Inhabitants. That's it. Okay. Habitantes. How do you say that? Uh, inhabitants? Inhabitants. Yeah. Because yeah. I was going to say citizens, but it wasn't a It wasn't city. a city. So. Huttons. Huttons. Humans. Yeah, people. Confused humans. <laughs> so. So I use a saying of something that happened in 1687. Oh my God. <laughs> Is there like an illustration or something? One of those like old, mm, maybe like horrible engravings or something like that. Mm. I mean, there's a lot of reports. Well, not reports. They called them... Well, not reports. I mean, it's called El Tiempo del Ruido. Yeah, but but that's there's no reports from back then when no you know, reports we were, about that. We were nothing. I mean, we I wasn't like, gonna say again, from that, but you know, I, I wonder how big what was the population of Bogota in 16. Oh, could you look at that? Maybe we could find that out. So, uh, population, yeah, Bogota, yeah, Santa Fe, Bogota, yeah. 16 what? 1687. 1687. Sure there was no email back then. Mm. I do skip population. No. 
Eh, ¿Cómo se dice eso? Population, ya. Yeah. Pero, pero pues es más fácil encontrarlo en español. ¿Población? Población. Está ahí al lado, linda. Eh, se me fue, se me fue. Um, no, because I just look, I mean, if the search contains Bogota 1687, they're talking about that specific like, thing that happened. It's called the time of the sound. <laughs> <laughs> the noise. Uh, I mean, I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things about that. Yeah. Nothing about the population. Yeah. Now, let's uh, speculate. Like, what could it be? It could have been like, uh, we are, Bogotá is in a, in the middle of a, a, of a fault, of a geographic fault. Mm -hmm. So the same fault that comes down, like the St. Andreas fault, that comes down through the west part of um, of the U.S., goes down through Central America, and then down through the um, center, the central and, you know, western part of the Andes. So that one goes right straight through Bogota. And, um, and that's why Bogota, they've always said that one day there's going to be a, a horrible earthquake that is going to, you know, destroy Bogota. Um, so maybe, but I mean, if it's just sound and not the, you know, no one like 15 minutes of sound. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty apocalyptic. Again. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it was the end of the world. Maybe, maybe the world started after that. Maybe. Again. Yeah. Cause 15 minutes. I mean, I get it. What you're saying about the earthquake, but an earthquake of So, like 15 minutes oh it destroys everything it yeah 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 you can't no nothing would survive a 15 minute earthquake but i'm i'm guess like what else because bogota is like like almost like sheltered by mountains so we're surrounded by mountains i have no idea what it could be so if it's a natural phenomenon like let's what, see if there's like any uh speculation about that or or ra or attempts at a rational explanation mm. so this article is called the story Bef behind the time of the sound <laughs> in bogota i'm going to speculate while you read I'm going to speculate that maybe it was something, because remember, this is post-colonialism, post-conquest colonialism as well. I mean, colonialism was still going on, of course. Um, so, you know, Spaniards are pretty much 100 years into, what was it? 1687. Okay. So, um, yeah, so this is 100 years of Spaniards living amongst the uh, native people, the native tribes of, of Colombia. So I'm guessing a lot of like uh, beliefs are being like destroyed. A lot of like cultural things are being completely destroyed, destroyed, erased. Maybe this was a way in which natives were fighting back, trying to scare the Spaniards. Don't you think? Maybe? I don't know. Like, we're, I'm, we're trying to find something that's rational. Not so, something that's like, you know, I don't know, Lord of the Rings-ish. So let me read. Like, it was uh, Middle Earth. I'm going to try to translate as I'm reading the article. Okay. So maybe it's going to be kind of funky, but no, no, no. I'll give Always it a try. Always good. It knock, was, knock on your knuckles. Knocking your knuckles. You you never get that saying right, Nicola. I never. I... I I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a poser. So it was 10 uh, p.m. Okay. Of the 9 of March have of 1687. Have you in English? Because you could wiki that in English and maybe it's there so you don't have to go through the... Uh... Well, I like... Okay, yeah, like yeah. Let's go with your translation. I mean, it's, no, it's no, no. like a challenge. Your translations are always kind of saucy. So yeah. uh, let's go with that. It has it's like always... a something, something. Yeah, there's a little some, some in some, there. Some, 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 yeah. Some, some, yeah. So... Let's bring that back. <clears throat> It was 10 p.m. Oh, God. Oh, this night. is narration. This is not just translation. From the 9th of March, okay. 1687. Okay. 
when the old Santa Fe de Bogotá mm. was awakened. Mm. How do I say aturdida? I don't know. You, you've got no help from Trembling me Trembling <laughs> because of a weird and terrifying sound. It's like a bedtime the story. The sleep was interrupted yeah. by sounds, yeah. mysterious sounds, mm. that anguished the inhabitants of the small capital of the country. Uh, where did it come from? Where was it going? Uh, there was not a not an answer. Only scared people uh, facing the terrible sound that, according to the history, prolonged itself for about 15 minutes and gave origin to the saying Los Tiempos del Ruido. So, uh, the use. times of sound in Bogotá. <laughs> It can't uh, just be sound. The times of sound, I, I like think, it's <laughs> like, you know, Big Bang and then the times of sound. The times of sound, yeah. Yeah, okay. We'll go with the times of sound. Perfect. The chronists. Oh, okay. Chronistas? How do you say <laughs> that? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. I'm not going to, I'm not going to help out here. The, Wait, chron the chronists. Chronista? Sure you know the chronists. In English? The chroniclers. Mm -hmm. Uh, the I like chronist. No, no, no. I go, and you can't. You can only use two more searches. Okay. By the way, two more searches to translate. You you burned your first one. Uh, the chronists mm -hmm. say that nobody knows mm -hmm. where that terrible sound came from. Mm -hmm. They didn't know if it was from the deep of the earth mm -hmm. or the infinity of the sky. Mm. The writer Andres Ospina, in his story. La Noche del Ruido, so the night of the sound, uh, talks about what happened and how it impacted every single street of the tiny city. And that even, and how do I say, a sufri? I don't know. I'm not here. You're going to use your second one already? Yeah. Oh my Sulfur. God. Sulfur. You have, yeah, that one was a gimme. Come on, that was easy. Um... Okay, so you've burned two. You that only have a, one more search to translate. That Use even, it wisely. That even a sulfur uh, smell oh. was left Ooh. in every uh, block. Devilish, then. Once we're running through the, to the mountains, mm -hmm. uh, the rest of them went down to San Victorino, which is mm, a neighborhood. Neighborhood. Yeah, the center. Uh, until they can seek help to the Plaza de las Yerbas. But nobody could escape. The sound. Every corner of mm. Santa Fe, of Colonial Santa Fe, was affected. Mm. The professor Gregorio Portilla from mm. the university, from the National University, mm. in an article that remembers uh, who were the principal uh, tellers mm. of the time of sound <laughs> the chron chron it? I have no idea Chroni I'm not here chronic chronists no chroniclers go with your gut <laughs> go with your gut Juan Rivero and Joseph Casani uh, mention how a lot of habitant inhabitants went out naked or in minor clothing <laughs> <laughs> and run uh, without a direction. Minor clothing. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, sure. Uh, other people didn't uh, found a better way that trying to reinforce the enter of the churches, mm. praying to gods of their devotions, and closing strongly the doors. Gods of their devotions? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, of course. Yeah, this is colonial. Okay, yes, sure. They really thought that the end of times uh, had arrived. Yeah, the end of language for sure today. But... Uh, I'm trying my best. No, you're, ki you're kicking butt. I'm Killing Colombian, it. so. Killing it. Um, uh, Where am I? Lost. According Good to choice. history, since that day, everything changed. Oh. And every 9 of March, there's a procession to
to well, every single church in search for the Santo Sacramento. Okay. I don't, I haven't even... Well, that's not popular anymore, no. but that quickly died, I would say. The reason a lot of people believed, uh, it's because it was a divine message. Other people uh, related that with, a earth, with an earthquake in Peru mm. that curiously occurred the same year. Oh, come on. But then, same that's a year. Giddy. Well... Not the same day. I mean... Uh, well, but this is 1600s. I mean... So there's a lot of hypotheses. Uh -huh. The one from Professor Portillo uh, points into the direction that it could have been a tiny asteroid that generated big and important uh, mm, have one more use it wisely waves mm. of mm, go for it hitting waves okay and that it's justified because every year between 10 and 40 explosions of that time of that type have an energy equivalent to an atomic bomb. What? In some cases, causing small uh, sulfur smell mm. with the, without the necessity of leaving physical trace on Earth. Mm, because there's a lot of uh, asteroids and meteoroids mm. that are consumed by the atmosphere. Mm. Was it mysticism? Mm. Something uh, from nature mm. or a divine message? Mm. We have no clue. Wait, the that's real thing from mysticism. Well, according to this, yeah, yes. I think that okay. Uh, there's no, no, nobody know. Uh, what? What? What are you doing? I was trying to know where I am. Oh. Uh. You got lost. The or? thing that we know. Okay, sorry. Is that people that night have that memory engraved in their memories but well they're not they're here anymore dead, but yeah i would say and engraved in the memory of the capital to remind us of some unusual things that happen in life <laughs> uh that kind of things that interrupt almost every midnight what to bring a message or an or a warning mm -hmm. To be remembered forever You're and to tell to a new generation. Okay. It was a terrible article, very long, and I think we've lost everyone. No, no, no. I think you did a good job. Yeah? I think that was yeah. pretty good. And yeah. you only used uh, two of your lifelines there, so that was that was pretty good. And I don't even have my glasses on. Okay, let's not blame your glasses and on And you know what's the thing? They were but... using, um, like, sayings that are very Colombian, like, ropas menores. Okay. So I was like, Ugh. like, I've never underwear, done Danny. that thing. Underwear. You could have gone with yeah, underwear. Yeah, no. No, I didn't want. I wanted to make it more poetic. <laughs> Miner's clothes. Minor clothing. Yeah, minor clothing. But that sounds like kids, kids that clothing. That sounds like kids clothing, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, Camila Ogorman said, translation is perfect, Danny. Minor clothing <laughs> and... Uh, a uh, loving emoji. Yeah. Uh, Margo dice, aquí tuvimos una erupción volcánica en la isla de La Palma a finales de año que duró unos meses y el ruido era impresionante. Claro, pero aquí los, los volcanes están muy lejos. Sí, bueno, acá no. Bueno, pero es que desde bueno, en esta Bogotá época no en se... un día claro, que todos los días serían claros en esa época, se pueden ver, se pueden ver los volcanes. Eh, ¿Quién sabe si hubo un, una erupción ¿Quién sabe? en esa época? Y pues fue una erupción. Pero pues uno ve el cielo y está cubierto de, de, de azufre. O sea... Sí, Margo dice, la isla creció unos cuantos kilómetros con lo de la erupción. Claro, todas esas islas son volcánicas, ¿no? Rock was saying hello from France. Hi, Rock, how are you? Hello. Uh... Miguel Fonseca said, Funky Danny. I'm going to take that as if I was uh, doing an amazing reading. I think you did a great job. 
I mean, I've never tried, as I was trying to say, to do live, like a live translation. Live translation is tough. Yeah. I've I'll never that. tried that. So. Never again. No. No, no, no. I don't think did, it was I'm, that I'm bad. Teasing. So You're, You did really well. Mm. Luis Fernando Bernal dice saludos desde Bogotá. Hola Luis Fernando, saludos también desde Bogotá. Saludos Luis Fernando. Luis Fernando conocía la historia... De la época del ruido, del tiempo del ruido, como dicen, como dicen por ahí. Entonces, ¿qué fue lo que me dijiste? ¿1633? No, 1687. 1687. 78, 1678. 1678. ¿Sí? No, 1687. Ok. ¿Estás seguro? Sí. Last word. Ok. So, eh... Uh, tiempo del ruido. Yeah, 1687. Yeah. So that's like 20 years after um, Rembrandt's death. Yeah. So pure Baroque, you know, in Europe, just painting, flourishing, gorgeous advancements. And with But us, nothing compared. we were concerned about a noise. No, it's but amazing. I don't think no. That is amazing. I don't think it's like we were less because of that. I mean, maybe no, we were. No, no. What? They don't have that. Maybe they don't have we. Our story. Yeah. Mm. So, Iván dice buenas. Bastante atmosférica la pintura. Sí, sí. Hoy estamos tratando de de. Enfatizar atmósfera porque estamos mm, haciendo una reflexión de cómo podemos mm, interpretar el estímulo que nos, nos proporciona mm, un artista de, 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 nuestro, de nuestra adoración, de nuestro interés. Eh, cómo podemos tornar como toda, mm, toda esa idolatría que podemos tener por alguien de creer que pues, son artistas maravillosos, son unos genios. Y en mi caso estoy haciendo como eh, hoy, estoy utilizando hoy el, el video para hablar un poquito de, de Kathy Colvitz. Y entonces eh, reflexionar acerca de cómo podemos utilizar eh, pues, la, la obra maravillosa que la, esas personas nos dejaron y hacer que tenga como un un espacio en nuestra propia obra sin, sin que nuestra obra se sienta iterativa de lo que, en este caso, pues, eh, ella hizo con, con su obra. Entonces, estamos tratando de ver cómo, cómo podemos hacer que, que uno pueda decir, uff, esto es, o sea, tengo a Kathy Colvitz en mi corazón, pero esta es mi pintura. Mm, Margo dice, noise y sound significan lo mismo. no. Lo que no, pasa no, es que no, dije pero... como time of sound y entonces me mantuve con eso y ya. Sí, pero, no. pero sí es más noise que sound. Um... Pero a mí me gustó. ¿Todas las decisiones que tomaste creativas? Pues es que igual tenía que hacerlo mientras iba leyendo. Sí. Entonces... Nadie aquí, nadie aquí o sea, a mí está no me vengan en... a, decir... a mí no me vengan. <risa> eh, yo creo que hiciste un trabajo fantástico. Muchas gracias. Um... Y la verdad te agradezco porque, porque y, y es súper charro porque yo soy muy curioso y en particular soy curioso con cosas como que decía mi papá. Y, y yo me acuerdo que superficialmente había buscado alguna vez lo que era eso, eh, pero pues es que se vuelve un poquitico esotérico también, como, como y, o, o le da un carácter así súper como religioso a todo, eso es que tenían lo que leías de que las puertas de las iglesias las tuvieron que cerrar o algo así de toda la no, gente. Que es que está... que... Sí, 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 es que buscaban refugio allá y después Exacto. como que reforzaban las puertas. <ríe> Exacto. Todas esas cosas yo soy como, ay Dios, oh my God. Eh, pero, pero se me hace, se me hace muy chévere que mm, nos hayas ayudado a, mm. a ponerle como... Una historia detrás sí, de Sí, sí, sí. Ya ahora sí la información que yo no sé dónde, o sea, yo no sé quién recopiló esa información en ese momento. ¿Cómo se habrá recopilado esa información? No creo que haya habido, o sea, tendría que haber sido seguramente un español recopilando esa información, haciendo como esa, esa crónica, pero, pero, 
porque es que o si no, pues ya es generaciones y generaciones y generaciones después de que se pasa una historia y pues... Pero lo curioso es que se tenga la fecha y la hora exacta. O no, sea, que tiene que haber algún... Pueden pasarse por generaciones, ese, ese tipo sí, de información. Sí, pero ese es el sí. tipo de información que se pierde. Pero ya es, o sea, es como genera resto. Ay, es el 9 de marzo y luego alguien va a contar y es como, no, el 19 de mayo. No, pero, o sea... pero lo chévere es que si el 9 de marzo había una cantidad de procesiones a iglesias para tratar de pedirle a Dios que por favor no nos vaya a mandar el apocalipsis otra vez, pues la gente, yo supongo que la gente que, que era que no sabía qué estaba pasando decía, oigan, ¿y, cómo, ¿y por qué estamos haciendo esto el 9 de marzo? ¿Qué pasó el 9 de marzo? Y entonces ahí le contaban. Hmm. Pero, pero me gusta, me gusta la historia. Me gusta. Eh, Royal Drawing dice... Yeah. Hola. Ah, hola. Hola, Royal Drawing. Miguel Fonseca said... It was great. Nunca había oído hablar de esa historia. Uy, Yo Miguel. me sabía el dicho, no me sabía el origen. Pero, pero sí, Extraña, Nicolás Miguel, me contó. Su familia tan letrada. Pregunte, pregunte por allá en su casa y me cuenta, Miguel. Mm. Eh, Rebeca Caridad said Hi Danny and Nicolás Watching from Colorado Where we're waiting on a spring snowstorm Oh nice Ooh. Oh my god And Rebeca also said Sorry if you've answered this a million times Oh don't worry Potato but, Yeah but do you use a medium So uh, No no so this is really good Because maybe there's people that are watching us for the first time So I don't use a medium. Well, I very rarely use medium. So you can actually see the um, carcass of uh, liquid that is in the palette right now. But I, I usually don't use medium and it's all part of uh, an effort that I've tried to minimize. I, I haven't like totally excised the uh, medium from my life, but I try to minimize it, minimize the use of it just because it doesn't, um, solvent doesn't, Uh, you know, carry any benefits for painting. None of them. None. Absolutely none. It is a necessary evil. So a lot of mediums need to use solvent and I try to minimize the use of solvent. I don't uh, dip my brushes in solvent. I just directly kind of like wipe them off and then clean them uh, with just a bar of soap when I'm done. Um, so I don't use medium and I paint. I've been painting on paper for quite a while now. And I don't prime my paper. So it's raw paper, oil paints, and that's it. And if you ask for the uh, brand, even though we are brand agnostic, please buy whatever you can buy, whatever you can afford. Honestly, there's no difference. Um, we can't blame our bad painting on our paints or on our substrate. Um, good painters will find a way to make any substrate work, any sort of paint quality work. So... Uh, we are brand agnostic, but we do use uh, moleskin paper. So the sketchbook uh, moleskin paper. And I have to say credit to where credit's due. And, uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, they have good paper. So Royal Drawing was saying... Estaba diciendo. Yeah. ¿Ya comieron o qué van a comer hoy? Ya, pues ya almorzamos. Sí. Almorzamos pasta... Con salsa de tres quesos. Más eh, queso parmesano. Entonces, cuatro quesos. <risa> es como light. Sí. Yo estoy que... Me duermo. Hago un viaje directo a la luna. Puedo eh... salir de aquí despedido. Oh, yeah. So, also, A was asking... Was, was saying, hello, Nicolás. Much love from Africa. I'd like to ask what kind of medium you used. So... Yeah, we just uh, addressed that one. Yeah. Mm. So no medium, no medium. We're only using the uh, the oil that's available in our paints that's quickly getting sucked, you know, into the fibers of the uh, paper because the paper is not um, is not um, primed. Margo dice, pregunté por mi propia ignorancia de inglés, ya quisiera tener tu nivel, Dani. Ay, tan linda, Margo. No, pero es que me dio bien, risa cuando buena dije, salvada, Margo, buena salvada. cuando dije Time of Sound, yo dije, ¿qué estoy diciendo? No, pero encantó, mi cerebro encantó. iba a mil, entonces se quedó The Time of Sound. Me en encantó, Santa Fe, a mí me encantó. De Bogotá. Um, 
Emilio Sorni dice, hola buenas tardes a todos. ¿Alguno aquí ha visto Metástasis, la Breaking Bad colombiana? Yo soy mexicano y apenas me vengo enterando mm. y tengo sentimientos encontrados, jaja. No, la verdad no. No, yo, yo me acuerdo cuando salió. Pero creo que no le fue nada bien. Eh, creo, no, creo. No sé si la serie alcanzó a acabar. O sí, sea, no creo. No sé, la verdad no recuerdo, no tengo eso tan, tan claro, si soy honesto. Sí, pero... Eh, Recuerdo que acá no fue nada popular, la verdad. Eh, no, nada popular. ¿No? ¿Nada, nada? Nada. nada. Yo, yo no, no tengo como esa... No, yo, yo la verdad es que no tengo no tengo cómo acordarme si sí si lo era o no. <risa> Acabo de buscar. Ay, y el, el rating en IMDB, uh -huh. adivina cuánto es. Dos, Hay 2.600 personas que votaron. Dos, ocho. Dos, dos. Dos, dos, grandes. <risa> sí, está sí, buena. la verdad creo que no... No. Está buena, está buena. Eh, no, pero es que, pues, yo no sé, esos son ese tipo de cosas que hacen en Colombia, o eso debía ser como una de esas... Eh, yo me acuerdo que eso era, si no estoy mal, era en esa época que estaban haciendo como Desperate Housewives, también lo hicieron en español, y había otra cosa que estaban haciendo como en español. Eh, y era como de, yo no sé si lo hizo Fox o lo, lo hizo... Ay, la de... Ay, la de los médicos. Sí, ¿cómo se llama eso? Pues acá se llamaba Corazón Abierto. Sí, entonces yo creo que compraban como Ay, es que se los, llama? los guiones o esa especie como de franquicia casi. Y claro, aquí pues igual hay mucha gente que no, no entiende inglés y pues eso es totalmente perfecto. Entonces para una audiencia que solo sea hispanoparlante, pues chévere contar esas historias... Que... Grey's Anatomy? Sí. Sí, es Lo era. que pasa es que, pues, pues no sé, es que yo creo que además esa serie fue, pues es de las mejores series de la historia. O sea, entonces competir contra eso es como complicado. Sí, me acuerdo de la de A Corazón Abierto porque, dato curioso, mm. una parte la grabaron en el edificio donde yo vivía. Uh. Sí, me acuerdo una vez que bajé por un domicilio, el señor como, ay, no puedo entrar a la cuadra y yo, ups... Y yo bajé y estaban rodando y yo caminé hacia atrás como lentamente y me tocó salir por el garaje. Ay, hubieras, te hubieras metido. Sí. Sales en un episodio ahí. No, y que en chanclas sí, y... Sí, en chanclas recibiendo el pollo frito. Sí. Sigan, sí, sigan, no. sigan ustedes, tranqui Yo no estoy. Uy, no, y era terrible porque graban hasta súper tarde y ponían sí. unos paneles de luz impresionantes. Entonces sí. mi ventana parece que fuera a mediodía sí. a las 11 de la noche. 10 de la noche, o sea... Sigan, muchachos, sigan, sigan. No me vieron, tranquilos. Sí. Iván... Tu mamá sería, les provoca un tintico. Sí, mamá, y disculpe. Eh, ¿Qué están grabando? Ay, tan chévere. Iván was saying... Eh, yes. That thing about Bogotá is not true. Both faults, San Andrés and Bocono, round far away, allá Colombia. There is no edge of... Of a tectonic plate near the city. Mm. Toca, no. Y van con los datos. Pero lo que yo estoy diciendo es como teoría. Incluso hay un dicho de, de una, 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 ¿cómo se llama? Eh, eh, ahí, ¿cómo se dice? Como Nostradamus. Que dice que a Bogotá, y es como una forma de dicho. En Bogotá el año de no sé qué se va a cosechar un terremoto, un, algo así. Yo no me acuerdo. Mi mamá se lo sabe. ¿Como una predicción? Una dices? predicción. Hay una predicción ah, ya, ya, ya. popular, pero es como un dicho. En el año de bla, bla, bla. No sé. Sí. Ahí sí me corchaste. Si no son dichos de 1600. No. Ah, sí, qué pena. Sí, este es muy no, nuevo para sí, ti. Sí, que me estás hablando. Sí, discúlpame. Eh. Sergi Arts dice, una pregunta para los dos. Sí. ¿Os gusta Bossa Nova? Llevo tres días escuchando Bossa Nova sin parar y parece Uf. que ya sé hablar portugués. Jaja, <risa> súper <risa> relajante. Sí. sí, es muy relajante. Sí, acabó una época que el Bossa era, ¿te acuerdas? Como que era todo Bossa. No sé si la gente le decía el Bossa, pero sí. Pues no, el Bossa seguramente es que el, el, Bosa. El, el bus que uno coge para ir a Bossa. Sí, pero, diste, el Bossa era muy famoso. Pero uno dice el rock, el pop, el jazz. El Bossa no, es que no me género. incomodo, el Bossa. Bossa, Bossa, es, no, un, es, lo, se lo puede acortar, uno lo no. puede acortar, uno lo puede no, acortar. No, no, no. 
Eh, el hip. No, no el hip hop, el hip. Mm, no, 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 no. Yo no. creo que se le puede decir bosa a bosa nova. No Estoy sé. 100% seguro. Um, Max Ignatov was saying hi from Ukraine. Hey, hi, Max. Max, how are you? Eh, Jim uh, Sketch Testing said, Does the oil paint soak through the paper or is it specially prepared? No, so it does. I mean, we can you show won't again. See, the you other won't painting. see like puddles of. Um, Of oil. So, if you want, we can show it. Because so, we did this yesterday. So, Daniel Ira. Uh, one, some, one that's dry. That's important. That's I guess that's the important part. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. So, we did this on Tuesday? Tuesday. So let me see. So I don't mess everything up here. Oh, so there's a drawing. There's a drawing behind it. But look, it doesn't doesn't seep. Have faith on paper. Paper is uh, a wonderfully. Um, uh, what was I going to say? I always say oh, resilient. That's the word I use. It's a beautifully resilient surface. So no, I think that's good. That's a good example. I feel. No, we sold that one yesterday. No, 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 no. To 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 show. Oh, oh, yeah. This is a good. This is a good thing because the person. I don't know if you guys noticed, but yesterday's painting, when I put it up for sale, I I left a, a little note on um the description. on the description saying there's a mystery painting behind. So whomever the buys mystery painting. mystery painting, well, it's drawing slash painting, mystery painting behind. So whomever buys this, the bag is probably going to get you know, the other one. So it's a two for one. So let me show you what was in the back. Yeah, so no you, they're getting this one in the back, which is pretty nice, like a nice... I had no idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's pretty cool. There What? we go. Yeah, so, you know, the person that bought it uh, is getting two for one, a good two for. Two for? Two for, yeah. That's how you say it. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I a, thought you were like... Like Bosa? Yeah. Okay, you, come on, you can Bosa say Bosa. No, you can say Bosa. I'm I'm pretty sure. Bosa y Tufo. Bosa es a Tufo. Now I have paint in my hands. Go wash it super quickly. No, it's fine. Just like uh, getting it. Yeah, nice on my <laughs> keyboard. Great. No, no, no. Like great. No, that's getting great. Getting it to absorb, which is worse. Yeah, sure, but... on my keyboard. No. Great. Yeah. That's no, no, great. no, because it was in the palm. Yeah, so, sure. In your mouth. On my mouse, yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? I don't know. Mm. No, I forgot. Uh, Daniel MC, mm -hmm. Daniel MC, perdón, mm -hmm. dice, Yeah, me encanta. La de hoy, la de ayer, digamos que todas, pensemos oh, que la todas. Historia. O la historia. Eh, a ver. Mm, Iwan. Sí. Said that Tuesday painting is outstanding. Thank you. Muchas gracias. A Iwan. Um, Max Ignatov said, I'm currently moving to Poland until war ends. Mm. Mm. It's, um, I mean, it's tough. Um, Any sort of exodus slash displacement is disgraceful. I mean, our country is is ridden with those problems. Um, again, of a different nature because ours is more of a civil war. There's tons of like ridiculous factions war warring over rural parts of uh, Colombia. Of course, it's like drug related. Of course, it's like. Um, um, dependent on, you know, certain areas that are drug routes or, or specific for um, drug plantations. Um, so it's very, very different, but that also causes, uh, you know, violence. The violence also causes tons of migration, tons of displacement. And it is something that we've been dealing with for decades and decades and decades. 
and it is horrendous. It is absolutely horrendous. No human being should be should be made to leave their home. There's no reason in this world why a human being should be pushed away from their home. So now we feel for you and and hopefully this is just momentary. Hopefully um, the world will find its way again, hopefully, and uh, you can return to your home. But always remember like home is is where the heart is and you know you're gonna carry your home with you and and in terms of place, you can always, you know, you can always recreate the idea of home anywhere you live. So you'll always carry your home with you. So, but best of luck. Iván dice, no, Bogotá y todo el altiplano están bien asegurados en la cordillera. El lío es más bien por el lado de la sedimentación, de la calidad del suelo y la posibilidad de que las cosas se hundan. Lo que pasa es que yo vi clases con gente de geología y a veces hablábamos de estas cosas. Ah, qué bueno, qué bueno. Muchas gracias. Ay, entonces, sí, gracias. Iván. Iván. Iván with the facts. <laughs> y facts with the vans. Uh, Tani said, Do you watch uh, Love, Death and Robots? I just got a notification yeah, season three. that the new season dropped today. Yeah, I'm looking we're, forward we're to watch it. Yeah. Mielgo's work this season yeah absolute genius absolute genius i mean he is um almost like single-handedly redefining animation i mean no i mean that that's a that's a big thing to say but i think he's he's making animation take a step um and that's pretty remarkable because animation as a medium is as varied and as open as wonderful as you can imagine But I just, I really think he's doing like this, these beautiful sort of humanist um, uh, animations that have just wonderfully real, uh, very, very grounded storytelling. I mean, fantastic, but very grounded storytelling. So um, he's amazing. He really deserves like a, a place, I feel. He's, he's doing something really, really important. Mm, Marcelo Peralta mm. was saying the funny thing about Bossa Nova mm -hmm. uh, new is that we don't just have Bossa or Bossa Vela mm. oh Be I'm sorry Bella. did Marcelo Bella. the the native old Portuguese... but wait wait because oh, I was sorry, sorry no 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 I'm just I'm sorry to interrupt you did Marcelo our very good friend Marcelo um, Marcelo did he just say Bossa Yeah, but oh, you sorry. didn't let me yeah, finish yeah. Brazilian. because... Are we talking about Brazilian? Wait, Marcel? wait. Marcel? So let me finish because... Oh, great. A good friend. No, because he's saying... Super wise. Bossa Nova, Bossa, and Bossa Vela are different. So... That's what I meant. When you say Bossa, you're talk you're not talking about Bossa Nova. You're talking about Bossa. A type of Bossa. So you were... Uh, <laughs> Nicolás, no, you... You, did, you didn't let me finish. Just, uh, I get, I get <laughs> yeah. attacked. Uh. I, I don't have the time to explain myself. You were saying you didn't let me let me finish and you interrupted me to try to let point me finish. It. <laughs> so, Marcelo said the funny thing about Bossa Nova, yeah, new, is that we don't just have Bossa or Bossa Vela. Ve I don't know how to pronounce it. How how is it spelled? V e l h a. Velia. Velia. Velia? No, Vela. Velia. Vela. Old. Bossa Nova is a derivative. Of yeah. samba, more specifically, samba raíz. Samba raíz. 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 Or raíz. No, I don't know why you went. Raíz. <laughs> no? I don't know. They're probably, they're all laughing at us, so. Um, Luis Leonel said, thank you for supporting Ukraine. Uh, thank you, Luis, for being here. Yeah, remember the donation tab? Oh yeah, is we can remember to maybe our comments exactly. So please go over there, donate as much as you can. Also in uh, the description of the video. Yeah. And. And if you don't want to, if you don't want to, if you want to donate, but you know, get something out of your donation, which is totally fine, totally fine. Um, I know that Jeffrey Watts donated a painting. I know that there's a bunch of paintings that are being uh, sort of not auctioned off, just off offered as part of those donations. So go to the um, go to the Broco uh, link, just look around. I think 
all the money that's being gathered through this week is going towards uh, Ukraine, close to uh, 50K. Could you check, Danny? It, it was close to 50K when I, when I looked at it this morning. So uh, it's, been, it's been wonderful. Mm. Yeah, uh, 47. That's wonderful. With 466. That is wonderful. So today is the last day of, of Proko's um, fundraising campaign. So that is super, super cool. If you've already donated, thank you. If you're thinking about it and you think you could do it, great. And also remember uh, that today's painting yes. is going to be shipped uh, to the person that donates uh, the biggest amount. It doesn't have to be like a ton. I mean, yeah. maybe you just donate uh, $10 yeah. and you send it to us, to our Instagram. To Danny's. To my Instagram, yeah. yeah. So I just uh, send, it another send a new comment yep. where I explain everything. Okay. But... If you send the screenshot or like the proof that you did the donation to my Instagram, uh, you can be the winner of this painting. So you, you're going to be supporting something and maybe without you knowing, maybe you just do a $10 uh, donation and you can get this painting. So uh, send me to send to my Instagram as a DM the screenshot of your donation and you can be the winner of today's painting and i think we should do it uh dm we should dm, DM. the people yeah because i think maybe if we give the name of the person right here you know it's best if we double check very quickly and then we send a dm so we'll get in touch with you like very soon after the um the uh the live uh stream finishes exactly so uh, everyone's welcome to donate and to send the proof, the screenshot to my Instagram. So, so. Uh, Marcelo was saying you were right. Oh, about... Nicolás. Uh, I'm sorry. You can say just Bosa. Mm. Bosa Nova means new Bosa. Mm. But there is no such thing as old Bosa or regular Bosa. Mm. So. Oh. <laughs> um, that's it, Danny. Yeah, that's it. Okay. M A. Okay. Yeah. What do you want? No, 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 not, not. I'm not gonna say I'm sorry because no, no, no. I was I mean, fishing I just... for an apology. Well, of course. Uh, well, no, 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 no. You were maybe just... hinting at it, but uh, yeah. no, because I just thought that Bosa sounded like Awful, saying like hip pretentious and not super pretentious. Yeah, yeah, like if you if you knew. Uh, yeah. You were like, oh, he's he's just being stupid. He's just being like, no, I never think. No, wait, I never think you're stupid. So don't even say that. I'm sorry if uh, you felt that I was um, wrong. Como que te estabas haciendo sentir mal. Yeah, I mean, because I don't know if all the people get that we're joking. So uh, yeah. sometimes you just act a lot. I Maybe act people. I, I act a lot all the time. Exactly. So yeah, yeah, yeah. just like act, but then clarify your acting. Cause... Yeah. No, because that's terrible. That's annoying. M.A. Mm, dice, hola, Nicolás y Daniela. Your figures are nerd paradise. What's your favorite figure? Oh, so let me show. Oh, yeah. Oh, and thank you. I'll take nerd paradise as a, as, as a compliment. Because I am super geeky, so and n super not afraid to say I'm super geeky, um, and I think that it's the cool. I mean, top three coolest things that I have in my life are my figures, then my children, Danny. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. No, but I no, mean... the most important things in my life are like family. So my family here is always going to be Samu Fed and Danny. So that's my, my family nucleus. Is that? Um, my broader family are my three sisters and my brother, whom I love, you know, to the death, you know. And then my my nieces and nephews, they're all incredible. So that's that's my core. That's like my family core. That's the people that I absolutely adore. That's the people that I care about. Um, that's the people that I listen to. Uh, but me as a human being, 
that is like super, super geeky that lived through a moment in time where it wasn't cool to like comic books. It wasn't cool to like toys. It was always kind of dumb and kind of stupid. Uh, you don't know how much I love that life gave me a chance to like work really hard and then to say, you know what you liked when you were young and nobody felt it was cool? Because I can't tell you how many times I still remember like, I absolutely love you, Danny. And I think I told you about the story, but I remember dating a girl when I was um, in freshman year. <laughs> Why do you say I have? I don't know, because I don't like to mention like other relationships. No, when I'm but I you. did. Like, out of, like, I mean, respect. I dated. No, no, no. We, we, before we talk you, about so... other relationships, yeah, but I, 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 I don't, don't make it. I don't make it a habit to talk about like past relationships because why? Not going like, to feel bad. Yeah, because why? Who, who cares about like past times? But no, I, I dated a girl and I remember the first time and this was like first semester. So because I think I only stayed. No, I stayed first and second semester in the dorms, maybe. Or was it first semester only? I forget. But, you know, dorm was like super, super small. But uh, McFarlane had just come out with the toys. They weren't as cool as they were like 10 years ago because nowadays the McFarlane toys are not, not, not that good. But I remember having like a McFarlane toy, like a spawn toy mm -hmm. in, uh, in my desk, you know, in the desk that they gave you with the, um, with the, uh, with the dorm. room. It was a tiny, tiny room, tiny dorm in New York. It was absolutely tiny. And um, I was super proud. I was like, hey, these cost money. Like I, I didn't have a ton of money. I used to, you know, use all my money on, on like materials and beer. So, you know, I didn't have money to spend. And, and I bought this figure and I was like super proud of it. And I remember this girl like came into the uh, room and she was like, oh, dude, what is this? You're too fucking old to have like toys. And I was like, oh, this girl is so lame. I was like, I felt it. I was like, ah, I thought you were so cool. And I, I really thought she was lame at that point. But the thing is, I didn't, I wasn't so, like super strong enough. So she made me feel like crap. So I actually felt like crap. Um, and, you know, fast forward to today, I'm a little bit older, but, you know, I'm with the coolest person that I could ever share my life with, <laughs> which is Danny. I'm with the coolest person. She too. is super supportive. She's like, of anything that I buy, she's like, oh, that's so cool. And she's amazing. I mean, I even push you to. Oh, uh, yeah. Sometimes I'm on the fence things. about buying like a figure or a statue. And she's like, do it. <laughs> do it. No, because I know you Horrible love them. Horrible influence. I, and I, always I ask love them you because they're... deep down, I always want to say yes. Yeah. So I'm always looking for you to like tell me, go, go for it. You work hard <laughs> enough. Come on. You deserve it. And you, you do. I mean, and I love seeing you happy. And I also love the figures, and you know that. I mean, I love that everything that's yours is mine. No, no, they're no, no, mine no, no. too. No, 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 no. So my no, no, thing no, no, no. over there. No, 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 no. My Doctor Strange. No, 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 no. So this is the part where we're wrong. You're totally <laughs> wrong. You don't like this. Is you know we'll go Johnny Depp trial if you try to take my figures. Nicola. <laughs> no, and I mean. No, nah, we're kidding. We're kidding. But um, but no, she she's the coolest person ever, and ah, she so um, sweet. she's she's super supportive, and she thinks they're super cool. I think they are the coolest things on earth. They are. I think they they're are done super by cool. ridiculously good, you know, artists. Yeah. Um, and they involve so much work. There's like craft, so much craftsmanship in 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 the uh, both statues and the figures. It's crazy. They're all handmade, hand painted. Um, all the uh, clothing is like hand sewn. Everything is just amazing. I mean, th they are expensive for a reason. So it is like buying art. I don't yeah. care what people say. I mean, yeah, sure. It's like super geeky art, but uh, whatever, bite me. Like it's mine and I love it. So even nowadays, you know that if you have a new uh, figure. Yeah. You have to wait for me to open the oh yeah the box because then I'm going to be a little bit sad. Yeah. And Danny's like super kinky. No, for that sounds some, Nicolas. For some reason, no, she's that like, sounds terrible. Wait for I'm me to open the box, and she smells no, the new wait. figure. Wait, no, because I have to explain what because kinky on, is a terrible word no, to describe it. It's not. Nobody's gonna kink shame anyone here. Nicolas, no. You can smell anything you want. No. That is like super. I don't know if you there's are supportive someone with my no, because it doesn't have anything the stuff to that do. I love. No, wait. I respect your yeah, kink. Yeah, terrible joke. It has nothing to do with. 
nothing like sexual. It's just that. I mean, I don't know the depths of this. So Nicolás, because kinky means that. So no. I the thing know. is that uh, I don't know why. Since I was a kid, I really love when Smelling. for Christmas I uh, I got a toy and it smells like new. Or when you had like when you have like a new book. Yeah. Or a new sketchbook or a new notebook. They smell amazing. So I like that. Um, Marcelo Peralta said, the funny thing about the word bosa yeah. itself is that it means protuberance. What? I guess <laughs> I guess it's an old slang or something, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get that. I, I never knew that. Yeah. Um, Rebecca Caridad said, did you always use oil as your medium? I've been painting seriously for about a year and can't seem to land on my medium. Battle between gouache, acrylics, oh. and oil. Oh, so that's a good battle. Um, yes, in my case, I I never made an immediate connection with oils, to be honest, because I, I, I don't think it's that easy. I mean, there's there's remarkable people that can make that connection super, super quickly. That was not my case, uh, for sure. It took me years to feel comfortable with oils. I, I, I do think the um, the learning curve of oil paint is really steep. It's a very steep curve. So it's very common. It's very, very common to, to see that people like jump ship with oil paint constantly. And, you know, it makes sense. It's okay. It's, it's difficult. It, it really is a difficult uh, seemingly unforgiving medium at the beginning. Um, but the truth is I, I stuck with it and um, it's been the only medium that I've ever wanted to paint with, even though like for, for, um, for our channel, for OPL, we have done acrylic weeks, we have done gouache weeks, we have done um, water miscible oil weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, we're missing watercolor week, mm -hmm. but I am so trying to avoid watercolor week because I'm just not good at it. I, I, I don't think a lot of people think that it's like, oh no, you're going to kick ass, like try watercolor. And it's like, no, I just, I know already that it's going to be difficult. It's, it is going to be difficult for me. I, I know it. And I don't know why people want to see me suffer, but maybe I'll do it for the people. Maybe, maybe. Tao Hernandez, TV Inc. said, hi, Danny, Nicolás. Hola, I'm watching Gustavo. you. I'm watching you for the first time. No, and they're saying names Octavio at the oh, end. So it's Octavio. Tavo for, for us, I would say in Colombia, it almost 100% is Gustavo, no? And Octavio too, no? Well, maybe, but Tavo for me was Gustavo. Well, or both. Eduardo? No, no Eduardo is Tato. No. Eduardo? Edu. Yeah. No, no, no. Tavo is Gustavo. Yeah, for us. Anyways, anyways. I'm and sorry. Octavio too. So. Okay, yes. Uh, Octavio said, Hi, Danny, Nicolás. I'm watching you for the first time. Thanks to Provoco and sadly, the war in Ukraine. Mm. Could you talk about the stage of the painting you are at right now? Name's yeah. Octavio, by the way. Yeah, Octavio, so thank you. So yeah, so this is a good opportunity to for the people that um, are watching us for the first time. Um, yeah, we usually try to... Um, have very specific exercises when we do uh, particular paintings every day. And um, each of them, we try to make it follow like a, a very specific intent. Sometimes those intents are um, of the formal sor sort. So may sometimes they have to do with like fundamentals of painting. Um, and other times they can be a little more abstract or a little more founded on... Uh, reflections about you know something that's exogenous to painting but you know we try to to land that reflection on a painting uh, for today we're trying to um, integrate the the love the respect the in you know in my case but I would say in ours I try not to speak for Danny ever but I know that she re she really really likes um, Katie Colvitt's work also yeah. but um so we're trying to take all that influence that enormous almost like super heavy to understand, to lift, to to comprehend that influence of Kathy Colvitt's work. 
we're trying to see if we can like invite it to a work of our own and and see how thinking about her constantly affects our own painting. So one of the cool things that we do here also is that there's no sort of universal way of constructing a painting. Uh, many times I do um, a tighter drawing. Sometimes I do a kind of like a squiggle drawing. And sometimes like today, and you can like scrub to the uh, beginning of the video to watch how we started, um, there's nothing. There's no real drawing underneath. And and the idea of today, and, and specifically for, for, no, for having, you know, no drawing underneath, was to push atmosphere. It's very, very important, very evident why we are going to try to push atmosphere when looking at Kathy Colvitz. I don't know if you guys are familiar with her. Could you could you post? Um, yeah. Danny, could you link her name or not link her name or maybe a, a, you can link right? Uh, I can link her name. What do you well, mean? Well, you can by... link to like images, like a Google you know search of of images if you want. So just for the people that are not familiar with her, or maybe people can just like um, no, I can can copy paste her name. I mean, I can. I think it's better if I uh, write uh, their name. Yeah, perfect. And people can you know go exactly. Ahead and do that. Um. So it was very evident, at least to me, that um, we should emphasize a lot of heavy atmosphere in today's painting. Um, to me, that's like one of the at least formal, formal, not not sensible, not sentimental, because I think that that's also a part of Colvitt's work that is enormous. But in terms of formal, formal qualities, like the makeup of the images that she does, when you're looking at composition, value work, um, you know, masses of light and shadow, uh, you know, th there's always like this heavy atmosphere. There's always this um, willingness, for example, to have your center of interest not be overly described. There's a ton of her etchings and lithos where everything is so heavy. The atmosphere is so heavy that it swallows up every almost like individual information. And I think it kind of makes sense because I don't think she wanted you to get all caught up in in thinking of, you know, when she was depicting workers, for example, peasants. Um, she didn't want you to get up in in each one of those peasants as I mean, and and I mean, you could you could um, you could just take apart the uh, the etching and look at all of them, and they're all wonderful characters. But there's something that unites all of them. It was always like far more important to her. I feel for you to understand all of it as a whole. Like this is like a big scene that's inhabited by all these people, but there's this almost like oppressing sense of air, like just, you know, um, dampening everything. You know, it, it's filtering every single bit of information that is there. And if if we, after um, reflecting upon Katie Kolovit's work, we come to the realization that that's what we like, and I'm saying we, but I'm actually talking about myself here, um, then that's what we have to put, you know, to hopefully good use when we start a painting while thinking about her, when we're doing a painting while, you know, having her in our mind and, and in our thoughts. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm only, only thinking about atmosphere. It's like that is what I'm hoping that um, that is being communicated. So for this painting, there's not much of like stage work going on. There's not many layers. And I'm sorry I took such a long way to um, long winded way to to try and answer your question. But there's not, you know, a progression in the painting as there would be when you're thinking about drawing, you know, underpainting, painting. Um, there's not really, there's, there's, there's a very messy sort of way of attacking the painting right from the start and, and hoping that that, with the hopes that that, you know, um, adoration for atmosphere, that, that um, respect that I have for, for this heavy atmosphere can be visibly um, felt right from the beginning. Like as soon as you look at the painting, you're not yearning for information. You maybe want to you know, uncover who she is, but you're not, you know, but, but you don't, you're not wanting to see eyebrows or eyes or, you know, little nostrils or like the corners of the mouth because the painting is bigger than those things. It's bigger than any of those things. Now, for sure, there could be painters that can take this 
and can slowly make all those, like all that minutia, all that, all those little bits of information fit into the context of that, of, you know, what we are um, proposing right now. But that's not quite the painting that I want to do. I want to keep it big and airy and heavy. And to me, that's, that's where this painting is going to shine, I feel. So if we just have this sense of, you know, this light coming through those windows and, and almost like um, um, blinding all the information that's behind and just falling kind of like um, this, this bit of dusty light cascading down and falling to, you know, the rim of her hair and then on top of her shoulders. And that's about it. It's, it's about this very, I don't know. It's, it's, it's almost, um, it almost feels ghostly, but also like a very, uh, like a presence that has gravitas. So I don't know. Imagine if a ghost would weigh a thousand pounds. Like that's what I'm trying to paint. I hope that made sense because mm -hmm. it makes sense while I'm saying it, but it sounds also stupid and ridiculous. No, so. I think it makes sense. Um, so, mm. how are you, Danielita? I'm what was good. that thigh? That was a big sigh. Yeah. Do you want to tell us another story? Maybe, uh, no. Some, Do you uh, want me to, uh, translate in oh, real time I, something? I was else? loving the, uh, <laughs> Mm. The translation, the live translation. Jim's Catching Testing okay. dice, nunca he visto este canal antes, creo que me suscribiré. Muchas gracias, no, Jim. Muchas gracias, muchas eh, gracias. Decíamos al felices comienzo. Felices de tenerlo acá. Sí, lo importante de hoy es como apoyar la causa. Si pueden, si ya donaron, fantástico. Eh, lo importante es apoyar. Y, y hoy no hoy no es el día que nosotros hacemos propaganda de nuestro canal hmm. entonces si, si puede volver chévere eh, muy bienvenido aquí nosotros felices pero lo, lo más más importante es eh, apoyar esta causa hoy Ese creo es que lo de las donaciones de para esta pintura no lo hemos dicho en español ah bueno sí entonces lo que estamos promoviendo eh, es que si les interesa las, esta, esta pintura en particular Mm, pueden hacer una donación y mandarle un pantallazo de esa donación al Instagram de Dani. ¿Qué es este? No tienen que suscribirse a ninguna de nuestras cuentas. No tienen que seguirme, no tienen que seguir a Nicolás, no tienen, nada. Aquí no estamos buscando ni likes, ni suscriptores, no. ni nada. Eh, le mandan eso a la cuenta y la persona que haya donado el valor más alto se Me se mandan lleva como un pantallazo, como un screenshot. Sí, nosotros eso. corroboramos que, que esa donación haya sido eh, efectiva. Y les mandamos la pintura a cualquier sitio, la mandamos por FedEx, nosotros nos ocupamos del envío, la mandamos por FedEx a cualquier sitio de este maravilloso planeta. Entonces, eh, quien esté interesado en donar en este momento y que quiera de pronto pues, tener como recuerdo una pintura nuestra, pues bienvenidos. Mm -hmm. eh, Lemon said, I'm art obsessed. And I'm wondering how you started drawing faces. Oh, portraits? I don't know if I if I ever... Because a lot of people um, think of me as a portrait artist. And I'm probably one of the few people that I don't see myself as a portrait yeah. artist. But um, But it's, you know, I can't say that if you look at my feed, like at my Instagram feed, there's obviously um, a ton of portraits in there. And people do enjoy what I do with uh, portrait work. But I don't know. I don't know if there was anything particular that was pushing me to do portrait work. I don't, I don't think I remember anything that was like, yes, this is what I want to do. I mean, my education was at um, SVA, School of Visual Arts in New York. And I had mostly, you know, by choice, I had classes that were um, from life. So... A lot of drawing from life, a lot of painting from life. So it is um, at some point you become a humanist when, you know, even if you don't want to, but when you start to paint people, you you just grow enamored, you know, of, of people, of human beings, and you start to find them fascinating. So to me, I, I would never grow tired or I would never grow bored of 
painting another human being. That that to me is like the most magical thing in the world. Um, but I can understand how, you know, that can feel like it's, um, you know, it's a choice that you do, but it's also something that limits what you do. Because a lot of people think that I'm a portrait painter, which I have done portraits, but I'm not, you know, I, I would never, ever consider myself like a portrait painter. Um, I'm, I'm much rather, I, I would feel much more comfortable saying like, I just love human beings and there's, there's nothing more, you know, enthralling to me than to just paint somebody, get to know somebody through painting them. And that's, that's incredible. And what I've chosen to do, um, for, for the past years, not, which was not quite true for the, uh, beginning of my career was to, um, was to paint, um, you know, my, my family life. So if you look at my work, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, Danny, Danny is making a lot of cameos, <laughs> um, both my son and daughter also, and my mother also. So that's, that's been the focus of my work. Just every, everyday life, uh, things that feel almost like inconsequential, but that I find mm, to be, you know, really, really beautiful. Rebecca Caridad mm -hmm. was saying, that's very comforting. Uh, I keep getting cold to oil, but every time I use it, it's torture. Oh, it's Gouache always. and acrylic feel more cozy, but I feel like I keep needing to try oil again. Can't tell if it's because everyone I love uses oil and that doesn't feel like the best reason. It's not. It's not. Um, Angela Sung, uh, Angela Ango Mango. On Instagram. On Instagram. Yeah. Um, I think it's actually Ango the Mango or something like that. No, I think it's Ango. Ango Mango. Yeah, but Angela, if you know Angela's work, you already know. But um, she's one of the most talented painters that I've ever seen in my life. She paints with... Um, with gouache. Oh, Ango the Mango. Ango the Mango, yeah. Yeah. So she paints with gouache. And every time I see a painting of hers in gouache, I never not want it to be anything but gouache. Like, like it's just perfect as gouache. It's perfect as painting. It speaks about her as a painter. So no, you can do amazing things regardless of your choice of, of, um, of paint. Don't worry about it. You can be an incredible painter and paint with acrylics. Um, James Jean paints with acrylics. Andrew Hem paints with uh, acrylics and gouache. Mm. So don't worry. There, there's nothing about... To, nowadays, there's nothing about other mediums that, that make you... Or that make them feel better or, or more relevant than other mediums. So, Yeah, and I would also say that... I mean, if you've tried uh oil too and you just don't feel good with it maybe it's because it's better for you uh to paint in gouache or acrylic and it's also cool to think about what's better for you as an artist like trying to uh distance a little bit the artist you admire to see the artist you are gonna be so i would pursue the medium that makes you feel more comfortable yeah, comfortable doesn't mean that you're not going to challenge yourself. No, no, but the one that you feel that maybe speaks more to you, to what, when you're using it, you yeah. know, like. Um, Emilio 2772 dice, dibujar y pintar es un método para tratar de entender el sujeto, por eso es tan interesante hacer retratos. Eh, sí, pues retratos al final van a ser siempre un reflejo nuestro, entonces, o sea, y por nuestro me refiero a, al ser humano, o sea, es el ser humano entendiéndose mediante la reflexión de el otro, entonces es maravilloso, siempre va a ser maravilloso, yo creo que eso podrán pasar eh, cientos de años y el ser humano siempre va a encontrar mm, una satisfacción enorme en utilizar el arte para representarse mediante la <coughs> mediante la reflexión desde el otro y no estoy hablando como de otra edad sino el otro como o sea el, eh, el, el, el otro ser humano el ser humano compañero de uno Jim sketch testing 
said, oops, I used Google Translate for my answer above, but I didn't understand what you said. No problem. Gracias. Uh, no. What was the question? So no, I'll, I remember. I'll, I'll give a, a no, it wasn't short... a question. Uh, they were saying that they were new to the channel and they uh, maybe uh, were going to subscribe. And you were saying oh. that, thank you so much. Yes. And that today, the yeah. most important thing you could do is uh, donate. Yes. To And this is for everyone. Uh, because today's purpose is to donate. Yes. Uh, but, of course, thank you so much, uh, Jim, for your comment. And for your effort of translating what you want to say. Oh, yeah. That's always me. I always do that, too. And then you're like, oh. Well. Now what? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you don't expect the comment to be read. Exactly. So it's like, oh, they actually read it. Now I don't know what they're saying. Mm. M.A. said, woman with dead child by col uh, COVID yeah. is so powerful. It is. M.M. Borg 00. So Monique said, my favorite is self-portrait. Date 1891-92. Yeah, the uh, the portrait of the mother and, and the dead child is... Mm. Yeah, it's a very, very tough image. And um, what's heartbreaking about that image is that she did it... She did it about, I don't know, over a decade before uh, her own child uh, died uh, when he went to war. So it's... Heartbreaking. Yeah, it's foreshadowing, but in the um, worst of ways, in the uh, cruelest of ways. So, MM Borg 00 said, mm. Remind us again how to donate. So, uh, Monique, there's a comment uh, pinned right here, but let me just copy it again and send it so it's easier for you. But it's the comment that it's pain, uh, pinned. I'm sorry here so um, so you just uh, go to the link and you can donate there over there and remember if you want to if you donate it doesn't matter if you donate uh, ten dollars one two three dollars whatever you can uh, do a screenshot when you donate and you can send it to my Instagram. And maybe uh, you'll be the winner of today's painting. So maybe you will get this um, as a thank you for your donation. Yes. Mm. Rebecca Caridad said, thank you for the encouragement. Really appreciate you both. No, oh, that's you. so nice. And uh, your questions are always welcome here. Uh, Roslyn's, <gasps> Roslyn said, oh my gosh, Danny, guess what just arrived at my door? No way. Woo! That was quick. Yeah. And you know what, uh, Roslyn, cause Nicolas knows that I'm not lying. I told him, I know. cause you know, what's going on? You got my favorite, uh, oh, yeah. of all. Oh yeah. 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 I have, I have my favorite, um, and you knew Roslyn yeah. that I keep up here. Which I adore. I think it's almost like Giacometti, like the one that I I just absolutely love, and it's about that big. Well, I the whole adore uh, it. Yeah, no, yeah. That oh, big? No. No, it's like it's this. about this big. Yeah, and even with the wood, it's about smaller, that big. Like yeah, this. it's about that big. And then I have right next to it the one that I actually painted mm -hmm. uh, for. Um, I forget what that week was called. Where you don't expect it or something like that, or where you're not used to looking. Look elsewhere. Look elsewhere. There we go. So I have those two, and I always want wanted to keep those two. But if it's not for the one that I love, like that one, oh, are you kidding me? That one is my favorite. No, and like you... I'm not just saying it. Like Danny knows this. It that that one was. Yeah. I remember when I I helped you take photographs of them. I always loved that one. I always loved like taking pictures of that one. Yeah, also because that's uh, very interesting because I remember I was uh, using a lot of wood that I found in the art faculty. Yeah. And someone chopped the leg of uh, something, like something furniture related. I don't know if okay. it was a bed or whatever. Yeah. And that's why that has like a hole mm. in the middle. And I loved 
that sculpture. I love it. It's perfect. I remember at the beginning I was telling Nicolas, okay, I'm I'm okay selling my sculptures uh, from that um, series I did, but not that one. But then I said, like, you know what? If I'm trying to, like, uh, getting deattached, detached. No, I love your deattached. I love it. I love it. I said it uh, in Menorca all the time. Yeah, yeah. I I love it. I love Uh, it. If I wanted to get detached, uh, the best way is to say goodbye to your favorite one. So you can just, like, quickly rip the bandage. And I was so, so happy. Uh, when I saw that you bought it. So I'm super happy that you have it. And I would be super happy if you can send me pictures of it so I can And please uh, let us know it. if it got to you well. I hope it does because I, you know, I do like a very, I, mm, oh, you do I a try to job. do my best no, with I the No, I think you do a job. But then, then we are hoping that FedEx wants to do, um, wants to be kind and treat our... <laughs> paintings and sculptures nicely so mm. Jair Piñero said oh you guys are still live yeah we are here uh, welcome Jair oh we're always we are live usually no but three... today's Friday no 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 but so. the days that we are live we're usually live for around three and a half four hours mm-hmm. three and a half hours usually I'm trying to see if maybe I didn't saw a question. Mm-hmm. So, mm, okay, so I saw that Margo was saying. Okay. Margo estaba diciendo. Ah. Porfa, ¿podrían porfa. hacer un pequeño resumen de la intención de la pintura de hoy en español? No lo entendí del todo en inglés. Sí, claro, con mucho gusto. Después de poner este brochazo acá, Margo, por favor. Dos segundos. Muy amable, muy querida. Yo voy a tratar de hacer algo acá rapidísimo mientras respondes. So, ah, no, so, no, so. So. Mm, Entonces, Marco me está pidiendo, or or I'm going to say this in English super quickly. Uh, We run like a bilingual channel. That's our choice. Uh, We are both uh, from Bogotá, Colombia. So we speak native Spanish. English is our second language, so we try to make make an effort to do it in English, to do our streams in English, um, just so that they could, you know, get to um, as many people as we can in the world. But uh, but we also try to be very faithful to the fact that we speak Spanish. And instead of doing like separate channels or separate days, which was what we tried to do um, for the first two years, to have like one day dedicated to Spanish. Um, we tried to mix it up in our lives and we hope people are like super respectful of that. So, so somebody asked me a question if I could summarize what I was doing in, in Spanish. So that's what I'm going to do. Listo. Entonces, eh, Margo, mmm, estábamos hablando un poco de cómo el propósito del video, más allá de lo que está pasando, digamos, puntualmente con momentitos de pintura, el propósito del video primero es hacer una reflexión de cómo podemos utilizar toda, digamos, toda esa carga que viene con la producción artística de personas que nosotros respetamos muchísimo o entendemos como, uff, estos artistas van a ser mis guías, estos artistas van a ser eh, las personas que yo quiero eh, seguir y quiero que tengan como un impacto en mi vida. Y esa lista de artistas pues puede ser variadísima y depende de, o sea, depende de 100 mil factores. Eh, debe ser distintísima para cada uno de nosotros. No, no tiene por qué ser igual. Eh, uno no tiene que por qué dejarse mmm, como... Eh, o sea, nadie le tiene por qué forzar a uno un artista. Nadie le tiene por qué decir a uno, oiga, ¿cómo así? ¿Usted no ha visto a tal persona? Es que a usted le debería gustar tal persona. Usted es como educado en las artes, usted debería ver la obra de tal persona y debería gustarle esta obra. No, 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 no. Nadie tiene derecho a esa parte. Incluso es importantísimo que nosotros generemos como esas personas que nos significan eh, muchísimo. Para mí una de esas personas es Kathy Colvitz. Eh, ella es una artista enorme. Yo recuerdo cuando nos la presentó mi profe Max Ginsberg, nos la presentó cuando yo estudiaba, eh, pues nos presentó la obra de ella, obviamente. 
eh, para mí era una fascinación, pero inmediata, inmediata. O sea, fue un impacto inmediato y yo contaba cómo, cómo es, es complejo para mí no sentir esa conexión porque, porque pues primero que todo es, fue una... O sea, fue más que una grabadora, no, no que ser grabadora o ser simplemente un, una grabadora sea, sea poco, pero, pero pues ella grababa, esculpía, dibujaba, o sea, era, era una artista integral completísima. Entonces, pero pues yo cuando me di cuenta que, que grababa, que hacía litos, que hacía silografía, que hacía eh, grabados, me me fascinó, desde ese momento me, me fascinó, tuve una conexión enorme y, y ahondando más después me di cuenta que es como de esas artistas humanistas como, como no hay en la historia del arte el hecho de que ella tuvo que vivir guerra posguerra de la primera guerra mundial y luego guerra de la segunda guerra mundial porque ella muere como en el 45 pues habla de una vida que yo creo que pocos seres humanos y pocos artistas tienen eh, para, para nosotros es o sea, yo no creo que muchos de nosotros entendamos lo que es ser un artista de, de la posguerra, cualquiera de esas dos guerras. Eh, entonces, hay, hay un peso enorme en la obra de ella, que yo digo que es, que es un peso que ya carga la obra de ella. O sea, más allá de que sea un artista mm, social, más allá de que hable desde, desde mucho antes eh, de las guerras, estaba hablando como, o decidía hablar desde eh, revoluciones eh, históricas, populares, particularmente revoluciones eh, populares alemanas. Entonces ella hace como series de, de, de esas revoluciones. Nunca le importaba ser históricamente correcta, o sea, nunca le importaba que la, la manera como representaba esa revolución fuera, por ejemplo, en la, en la, en la, revuelta, eh, en la revuelta del siglo XVI, que, que ella tiene toda una serie de esas, pues no estaba tratando de, de, de pintar gente humilde, gente pobre del siglo XVI, sino que lo hacía más o menos como atemporal. Era más la idea del pobre como la idea de aquel que es, es oprimido, que es históricamente oprimido. Entonces eran unas cosas súper bonitas. Ahora, yo no tengo esa realidad. Esa, eso, yo, yo mentiría si digo que esa es mi realidad. Y también a, a mí hay algo que no me gusta y es que la gente se sienta forzada a... Um, a simular una especie de, de realidad que no tiene. Eh, esa no es mi realidad, pero entonces el, el, eh, digamos que lo difícil para mí es tratar de entender, bueno, yo que no soy un artista, no, no soy un pintor realista social, ¿cómo, cómo trato de, de hacer que la obra de ella se sienta como parte de mi pintura? Sin que yo tenga que forzar una especie de obra de, de, o sea, que tenga que ver con, con revoluciones o que tenga como un alto grado de contenido social. Porque yo siempre he sentido que soy un pintor como mucho más intimista y no es que una cosa quite la otra, sino que pues se sienten, se sienten que las dos están clamando por un humanismo, pero desde distintas orillas. Eh, entonces es súper es bonito como hacer esa primera reflexión donde uno dice, bueno, si quiero que esto sea parte de mi vida, ¿cómo hago para que eso sea parte de mi vida? Y, y, y parte de mi vida y, par, y que se refleje en mi pintura. Entonces yo traté de entender que, y yo lo describía pues de una forma medio exagerada, entonces de pronto me, me tomo la licencia de hacerlo nuevamente, pero decía cómo, cómo yo sentía que el, el peso... Y, y el, la gravitas que hay como en la obra de, de Kathy Colwitz es, es algo que es un peso como que para mí sería insoportable de sostener, pero que por lo menos soy consciente como de ese, de ese aire tan, tan, tan pesado. Y entonces, de pronto, desde lo atmosférico, o sea, hablando, tratando como de, de entender ese, o sea, el aire seguramente que ella pintaba era un aire que estaba pues así súper eh, embriagado, de, de todo el dolor de esos seres humanos que estaban eh, penando en las imágenes. El mío, el mío no, el mío no, normalmente mis imágenes no, cargan como con el peso interior, o sea, la, los míos creo que son mucho más unas presentaciones de un ser humano que carga el peso de so, simplemente de ser humano. Pero entonces yo decía, bueno, de pronto puedo traducir ese, esa atmósfera 
tan, tan, tan pesada, o sea, tan casi que insoportable, a una imagen donde la atmósfera se trague las cosas. O sea, la atmósfera le pasa por encima mmm, como a la especificidad de, de, de lo que se represente. Entonces, si estas son ventanas, son cualquier ventana. Y aunque esta es Dani, eh, yo, yo hago muchísimo énfasis en decir, aunque obviamente el, la reflexión contiene una conexión con Dani, pues Dani en algún momento también es la persona. O sea, es el ser humano, cumple la, la función de del ser humano que está habitando como ese espacio que se está dejando como, como está dejando que ese aire sea atragante como de humanidad. Entonces, eh, yo creo que eso es como lo que estoy tratando de hacer. O sea, suena re poético hoy, yo creo, pero es que es súper complejo. O sea, si estamos diciendo, hey, vamos a ayudar a una causa humanitaria, yo no soy un pintor así súper político, mi, mi pintura tampoco es llena como de realismo social, ¿Desde dónde puedo hablar como de humanidad? Entonces, por eso pensé en Kathy Colwitz y por eso pensé como en, en esta manera de abordar una imagen. Entonces, creo que ojalá se entienda y ojalá no se sienta tampoco exagerada, sino como genuina mi intención. Creo que es buen resumen, de pronto, ojalá. Si me faltó algo, pues me, me preguntan, por favor. Um, Zeta D was saying, what's the name of the artist? So, uh, the one that Nicolás was referring is uh, Kathy Colvitz. But uh, if you're asking what's the name of the person who's painting, it's oh. uh, Nicolás Uribe. He's the artist painting. Mm. Uh, you have his Instagram over there uh, with the name. If you don't know how, it, how it's spelled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice one, Danny. <laughs> nice save. No, because I was trying to do something. Yeah. Uh, well, you were uh, talking. Yeah, rambling. Yeah. No, no, no. I you were ramble. doing the translation of uh, the intent of today's painting. Yeah. And I was uh, doing a tiny uh, text. Yeah. That can say, that can make like a tiny summary about uh, today's painting donation. Okay. That we can put. On the live stream. So okay, it's easier yeah. if people are just uh, uh, getting to the stream right now so they can see it and they can know what we're doing. Yeah, we need to do it kind of indirectly because um, this is Broco's initiative. So, and all the donations are going through, um, you know, through the uh, web website that Broco has set up. So that, that you know, in terms of logistics, it's probably the easiest way to go about this mm -hmm. and that's why we are asking people like if you want to donate go donate through uh Proko's site that's where he's keeping tabs of everything um and you know if you do so then you know we we will gladly uh thank you by um you know by giving you this painting so i don't know if you can see the text i did me? No. Oh, people. People. So, well, people will tell us. People always tell us. People will always let you know, Danny. Mm. Just like editing on the go. Oh, b best way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, maybe I can use like a filter to alter the color so it's uh, easier to read. How big is it? Can I see it? Perfect. No, it was because I used uh, red. Oh, okay. And it wasn't as... Uh, white can be better? Let's see. I don't know. It's her editing skills. Photoshop skills. <laughs> well, it's not Photoshop because I'm editing right here. Word skills. No, like... Uh, Paint skills. Life skills. Uh, I think... No, I think it was better here. Maybe a little bit more oh. saturation. 
I mean, people know. I mean, people can, yeah. No, click how... the link. Click the link that's on. Uh, that's uh, pinned on the chat, or yeah, click it the, says... the uh, link that's on the. It's the same link that's on the description. Exactly, because the text says, "Send us a screenshot via Instagram of your donation, and you can win today's painting." There we go. Uh, and I did. Uh, an arrow. Okay. An arrow. Okay. So people know that it's to my Instagram. Okay. So I made it super Oh, it's easy. a mess. I don't even want to look at our screen. <laughs> no, it's fine. And I did a map. <laughs> of how to yeah. uh, enter to... A ver. No sé qué iba a decir. Right here. I think it's all good, Danny. Do, you don't have to... Um... I, I already did it, so I'm going to keep going until I have it. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. I wouldn't know what to look so at wait in our stream. Here. I'd be like, what is this cacophony of, like, nonsense? Uh, no. Danny, I think it's fine. Well, yeah. I think you uh, get what I'm trying to say. I think we're missing, like, an... An animated GIF just running around the screen. <laughs> yeah, donate. Um, MA said the text is perfect now. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, um, so there it is. Mm, much, eh, Margo Delgado dice, muchas gracias. No, Me parece Margo. un ejercicio muy inspirador. No, ¿qué tal, Margo? Con mucho gusto. Roslyn said one more Ro thing to the... To the R. To the R because the other row to the Arby's. isn't yeah. here today. No, not today. Uh, Roslyn said one more thing. I especially love how her shoulders are pushed back. Such feeling. Oh, thank you. Tiny, tiny little things. Thank I don't know if you. in the painting or in the sculpture. I don't want to take credit oh. if it was in your sculpture. I think it was in your, in your sculpture and I said thank you. I said thank you, maybe, uh, and it was maybe in your let's painting. Both say, let's say both. Yeah. yeah, thank you, in general yeah, for so everything. If it was for the painting, we both say thank you. If it was for the sculpture, we, we both, both say, say thank say, you. Say thank you. There we go. Mm. Easy peasy. So again, I'm trying to check if maybe mm -hmm. I'm missing a question. If you guys uh, want to ask any question, you're welcome to do it and we'll be happy to answer them. Miguel Fonseca decía, creo que en Bogotá ya hubo un terremoto como hace 100 años. ¿Sí? No sé. Yo tampoco, Miguel. Sí. sí. 1917. Sí, que en Bogotá pueden a ver, puede haber terremotos 100%. 31 de agosto. What? Sí, de 1917. Mi cumple. Sí. Pues no, tú cumple en el Yo 1917. Sabía que el, el mundo estaba retumbando <risa> cuando mi mamá dio a luz. Eh, sí, sí, sí. You know what I did, Danny? What? I don't know why, and it has to do with what Miguel was... Um, well, no, no, no. It doesn't have to do with what Miguel was saying. But um, just reminded me. I, you know, when you're in the bathroom and you have nothing else... No, no I started this weird. Yeah, terrible. Yeah, that was, that was pretty bad. But, you know, I was trying to say, you know, when you're in the bathroom, because that's what, when Happened. I made that choice. But I, I usually think I'm very lucid in the bathroom very very lucid 
So, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this. Yeah. But I was trying to, um, I was trying to think about what were the comic books that came out <laughs> when I was born. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and I like, and I found a couple. I mean, they're super easy to find, to be honest, and they're not in good shape. So I, I bought a couple. <gasps> that's amazing. Yeah, I like that uh, dynamic. So I bought um, the Batman that came out in in uh, August nineteen seventy seven, which didn't mean that that was the time when it was actually done. Mm -hmm. I realized that comic books came out super, super late. Like, I think it was May, like comic books that were, I mean, this is usually the case that people would work months before on the comic books that would come out months later. But, um, but so for the August ones, they were done in May of 19, like last week of May, 1977. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, um. And uh, I found uh, which Batman came out, mm -hmm. and I found which Hulk came out because mm -hmm. I don't. I do think that those are the two biggest like characters in my childhood, mm -hmm. it, you know, comic related. So I thought it was super cool to have like these are the two comic books that if my mother, after giving birth, <laughs> would have said, "I want to read me some Hulk." <laughs> That's what the one. would she have found in the comic book store? Yeah, like I'm gonna read a comic. Uh, yeah, I so can't, he can sleep. Jesus Christ, as a baby, you know this kid doesn't let me sleep. I want to read my comic books. That's what my mother would. Well, have I said. was saying reading a common comic book to you. Oh, that would have been cool, but as no, you know, when you're a kid, you just annoy. It. When you're like a newborn, you just annoy your parents. Yeah, but you can read like the dictionary to a baby. And oh, it yeah. doesn't matter. Oh <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, you can you can in a very loving voice say, "Shut up, please." Yeah, let me sleep. Yeah, because um, shut up, and they please. Love you. That wasn't like a loving. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. that was. Yeah, I know. I know. The feeling beat all. me. The feeling beat me yeah. to it. The the sentiment beat me to it. Yeah, uh, I couldn't control that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I I figured, oh, this would have been cool. This is super super cool. I wonder what those stories kind of read like and felt like when um when I was born. And uh, so I bought three, you know, mm. they're, they're about 15. I, I got them for like 15 bucks each. So it's not terrible. Mm -hmm. um, so I got a Captain, Mem Captain America, which I don't really care for, but it was um, a Jack Kirby illustrated mm. um, Captain America. So, yeah, so huge, you know, amazing. Um, and I got a Hulk one mm -hmm. and the, uh, the one that I told you, the uh, Batman one. And they all look like horrible stories, you know. Just by the cover, it's they're they look amazingly lame. But um, I think I no, think it's but I cool. think that uh, like the sentiment. Yeah, I like it. Uh, behind it, yeah, it's amazing. I was checking out. Yeah. And the year I was born. Yeah. In my month. Yeah. It was The Amazing Spider-Man 400 at Death in the Family, die-cut embossed, embossed cover. Oh, that's The Death <laughs> in the Family. Isn't that when they kind of killed off Spider-Man? I don't know. I think so. Or maybe it's like an Aunt May dying for the 500th time. Well, they did or like Mary a read. Jane died? I don't, I don't know. know. Now I don't remember. <laughs> MJ. I don't, I don't remember now. I'm just saying things that I remember when I was like... You know, fifteen. Mm. Yeah, because I was curious. That's a good uh, thing you did when you were. You in got the a bathroom. very in in yours. You got a super nineties. Like they would em emboss the covers and do like you know metallic covers. They they found the weirdest ways. They were making advances in printing, mm -hmm. so they would make the most ridiculous covers and they were trying to charge more for comic books. So just um it was like the day you know it was the um time of image comic com image comics and like new printing and um so the pages were not the same paper as mm -hmm. you know the Marvel or the uh, DC paper. And the coloring was completely different, uh, and and they were trying to charge just a little bit more mm -hmm. for those things. And I was a sucker for it too. Mm. 
Jim Sketch Testing said, what's the reference for this painting? So it's a picture uh, Nicolas uh, took from me when I was uh Yeah, this was our Airbnb. Up. Yeah, Airbnb in Madrid, Madrid. Yeah. just a couple of weeks ago that we were traveling because we had a, a workshop. So we were... Um, we were uh, in Menorca for a workshop. We were teaching a workshop. And then we spent uh, a week after that in Madrid. Mm -hmm. And this was, uh, we stayed in an Airbnb that was like the, um, I mean, it was like the attic. You could tell that the whole apartment was just like an attic of, mm -hmm. uh, of the last floor of, you know, that building. No, but you know what's the but they curious repurposed thing? It. What's that? that? In that floor, yeah, there were three apartments. Yeah, it's super weird because the the ceiling you get the it, it's almost as if it was a house. You get the very slanted ceiling and all the beams, as if it was an attic. But I think that's com kind of common in Spain. I don't know the the ones the times that I've stayed there. I mean, um, again, very limited experience. But the times that I've stayed there, I, I had never stayed at a place like that. So they repurposed it into an apartment and it was very, it was very cool. It was weird, but very cool. Um, they did like a makeshift second floor on the attic and you mm -hmm. had to go up these like, um, these very uh, narrow yeah, stairs. Narrow steps. I almost like uh, fell down uh, the second day on those steps because they didn't have like, they didn't even have like an even number of steps to go up. It had like a tiny little step uh, as a end. last step. Mm -hmm. So so getting down was weird and, and going, yeah, going up wasn't that bad. But then it was, um, it was, ceilings were low, I would say. In the lower part of the yeah. angled ceilings, they were low. I mean, Danny is petite and even Danny had to like, uh, yeah. just lower her head all the time. So. Oh, wait. I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, because I was trying to... <laughs> what, did you, what happened? No, no, no. I was trying to... Because we were having some bots. Yeah. And I, by accident, uh, deleted someone's comment. Oh, so we But apologize. I just have it here. Yeah, I, ha I want to apologize. It was... Uh, Sinocephalus said, Nice, you were in Spain. Greetings from there. Thank you, and I'm sorry. I was uh, eliminating some um, bots. We're, yeah, we're getting a ton of them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I saw them. My mother, my mother the other day. My mother, a fan of the channel, and she's uh, she's always listening. Um, she was super worried. She's like, "Look at the stuff that I'm getting," and she was thinking that she's the one that's getting it, like nobody else. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "No, mom, those are just bots," and and that's just. That's the internet for you. Yeah, and like, I tried to... There's not much that we can do about it. Yeah, I tried to delete them all. And I was deleting it. And I was like, because uh, I do report, then uh, hide from channel, and then delete the comment. Oh, and so when you I reported did, like... No, uh, no, no, no. No, I didn't report them. Like, I did oh. the two first steps, okay, because I reported the person that uh, did the comment. And then, eh, Sinocephalus... I don't know why I clicked there and I uh, deleted the comment, but now it's there. So I'm sorry. No, it's okay. And um, Margo dice, una buardilla. Buardilla. Eh, sí, puede ser, sí. Mm, sí, creo que es eso. Sí, 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 ahí estoy viendo y sí, exactamente así era. Eh, mira, la definición dice. ¿Qué es una guardilla en España? Ventana que se levanta por encima del techo de la casa y espacio situado bajo el tejado de techo normalmente inclinado. Sí, perfecto, exacto. Mm, esta es la forma mayor... Bamala, mayoritariamente Bamala. usada en todo el ámbito hispánico. También son válidas, aunque de uso menos frecuente, las variantes boardilla, boardilla y guardilla. Sí. Sí. Exactamente. Exacto, sí, sí, sí. Lo que pasa es que yo también creo que estábamos en un apartamento, como estábamos en un apartamento que era en el... Centro. Centro. Mm. 
era un edificio eh, antiguo. Entonces... Más o menos. Sí. Viejito, pero no tan. Uh, Sinocephalus said, yeah, but waves come every certain time. Yeah, but I'm sorry, I just like misclicked and I erased your comment, but I'm happy to see you're still here. And I just deleted all the bot comments. We've um, been getting like tons of Tons. Them. Yeah, yeah, lately. Which is, I mean, I think people are get people just get used to that. Mm. Like in my, you know, that I'm a Liverpool fan. Mm -hmm. But every time Liverpool posts something or tweets something or puts anything, like the first 20 comments are always uh, bots. Always, always, always. Oh, so we have the row to the oh, rose. Uh, we have Robin here. Robin was saying hello, joining late. Super late, Robin. But oh, you're I mean, oh, no. I'm joking. Of course, I'm joking. The, uh, uh, we're always happy to have you here. The live starts with when Robin gets here. So, um, Ranchi Salido said, "Have you tried using?" automated filtering for certain words in chat yeah we actually do uh because we have that option on youtube the problem is that i think now they're being like super intelligent because the message that can be uh reported because of uh what it says yeah it's in the username yeah so they just comment a heart or something like that so it's like you can't say that they're using inappropriate language because it's a heart so it's the user so you have to report the user so that's why that filters can't catch that kind of bots so um luna sona said hello 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 luna uh james catch testing said good to see a bilingual channel Do you think in a different way when you speak in a different language? Oh, 100%. I do. Yeah. yeah. 100%. I have like half a brain. <laughs> yeah. When I speak, we speak in English. Uh, we hope we speak co coherently in Spanish and um, like a headless chicken in English. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, we try our best. So, and I mean, you, maybe you feel that way, but you are certainly more capable of speaking in English. I mean you you were you were in New York for quite a bit living I, there and that helps a lot because I've never uh been away of my country long enough in a English speaking country. So, I mean I've I've went uh for vacations, but that's it. So, yeah. I think you speak perfectly. Thank you. No, I'm, I'm joking. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Julia Tobar dice, hola, me Julia. encanta. <laughs> hola, me encanta cómo va el pelo y qué genial iniciativa. Sí, sí, sí. Eh, nos pareció muy chévere eh, que Proco le dijera a Nicolás. Proco le dijo a Coco. Proco a Coco, sí. Pro Coco. Sería el, <laughs> el live stream de los dos. Pro -co 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 -co. Pro -co -co -co. No, no más. No. De... <ríe> Estaba haciendo la canción del inicio. Sí, de pronto alguien la cogió. Eh, pero sí, muy chévere. Eh, so, Rosalind was saying, Hey, Robin, with an emoji of two dancing cats. Cat uh, costumed uh, girls. Oh, wow, that's... And Robin said, to keep the, uh, Roslyn, power up, and a little uh, fist. So, knock, knocking your knuckles. Mm, mm. Mm. I love how people that are probably here for the first time are like, what, what are they what's going, going on? on? Yeah. It's not even funny. <laughs> I think it's not even funny for people that are here a lot. I think it's not even funny as like us. a hashtag that represents our uh, most our channels, most of most our more videos, our channels, yeah, most our videos you. in our channel. Um, uh, 
So earlier today, yeah, uh, Robin sent me a um a video, yeah, of a turtle that's like oh. in a pond, maybe. Okay. And the turtle is upside down, and they're like struggling to get back. But in inside the water, inside or? the water, yeah, because it, it's what? like an like an a little bit of water. Okay. And the other turtles just like come to the rescue. Yeah. And they help the turtle flip. No so way. it was amazing. But I, I mean, was like having a heart attack when I saw yeah? the little turtle struggling. Well, I don't know if it gives me peace to hear the other turtles came to the rescue. Like, how long does that take? No, 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 uh, Nicolas. I mean, they That's... can be uh, faster than what you think. Uh, Trust no, me. No, I'm thinking of turtle speed. Mm. Yeah, I'm really literally thinking of slow. Rosalind said, ha, ha, ha. I saw that video and saved it too. You know, the row, row connected. Uh, Robin said, exactly. I'm often an inside joke, but I'm rarely aware of it. <laughs> um, no, Robin said, they were probably showing up to eat him. <laughs> no, Robin. No. Robin with the facts. Robin's going to get of blocked. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, so I was seeing a comment mm -hmm. from a while ago. I'm sorry. No. I hope they're still here. Oh. Damian Alquichire dice, mm -hmm. hola, una pregunta. Sí. Una vez recuerdo ver ese corto Hamelin. Sí. Eh, creo que en los créditos estaba Nicolás, ¿no? Sí. Me da curiosidad saber de esa relación de Nicolás con la animación. ¿Y pues en qué otros proyectos ha estado involucrado en animación? No, en ningún otro. Este fue como el más, el único en el que he trabajado realmente. Y, y fue súper tarde en el proceso. Mm, ya había como muchos layouts. Carlos Felipe León, que es un monstruo, que es un genio. Probablemente como el colombiano mm, que ha trabajado en... Está bien. Está sí, no, estoy, estoy quitando aquí cositas. Aparecios el colombiano que ha trabajado rascándote. como en, en, la, en las producciones más chéveres, más grandes de animación así internacionales. Eh, Carlos Felipe ya había hecho un montón de color keys para, para los, eh, las secuencias. Entonces, honestamente, yo desde el, la parte creativa, muy poco. Muy poco tuve que ver desde la parte como de, 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 de esa producción inicial, muy, muy poco. El genio ahí, 100%, 100,000%, es eh, Carlos Felipe. Y también genio, así absurdo, eh, Landa, porque Landa, mmm, que era como el director de arte, estaba eh, haciendo los layouts que, para, para todos los fondos. Entonces, lo que se dieron cuenta es que no iban a lograr pintar eso a tiempo. Uh -huh. y, y me dijeron, tenían muy pocos fondos pintados. Landa había pintado... Yo creo que unos tres fondos de pronto, dos, tres fondos. Y entonces me dijo, no, oiga, eh, venga y, y me ayuda. Usted ha hecho eso, ha hecho esto. Y yo no había, o sea, yo había pintado en Photoshop, pero por, eh, por gusto propio. Uh -huh. Pero nunca como algo que tiene que ser utilizado para una animación o algo así como súper en serio. Y entonces, pero pues yo, yo, soy, su, yo soy como muy... Mmm, curioso, entonces le dije que claro, o sea, listo y tuvimos poco tiempo yo creo que tuve tres meses para hacer eh, todos esos fondos todo, todos los fondos, menos de tres meses si no estoy mal, sí, mucho menos incluso, porque eso, creo si no estoy mal, yo lo hice cuando estaba en la universidad y yo estaba pintando yo pintaba en la tarde iba a dictar clase a la universidad y después por la noche me ponía a trabajar en los fondos, o sea, yo estaba exhausto estaba, estaba como trabajando muchísimo más de lo que debería estar trabajando. Eh, pero terminé haciendo la, la mayoría de los fondos ahí. Eh, Súper chévere le, la experiencia, muy bonita. Lástima el, los tiempos, lástima los tiempos porque sí se... Como que hubiera querido disfrutar más del proceso como de preproducción y, y, y todo el proceso ahí creativo de, desde storyboarding hasta como hasta llegar a, al, 
al arte final. Pero, pero no, fue chévere. Fue chévere eh, trabajar con ellos increíble. Landa, súper, súper talentoso. O sea, talentosísimo también. Eh, Carlos Felipe, ahí vimos que Carlos Felipe hizo... Pues Carlos Felipe está en Pixar. Hizo hace poco... Eh, Red. Sí. ¿La de Red? Sí, sí, sí. Hizo como... Eh, yo no sé si estaba director de arte. Okay. Eh, o, creo que no era... No era quite director de arte. Era como... Tenía como otra función ahí. Pero... Uf, maravilloso. Es que Carlos Felipe es un, un pintor, un creativo, pero absurdo, absurdo. Es un, un, un genio absoluto, a mí se me hace. Entonces, eh, sí, mucho de lo que yo hice fue seguir como ya las pautas que él, había, que él había hecho. Entonces, mi trabajo fue realmente fácil, la verdad. Y simplemente, o sea, fui como el pintor. O sea, me contrataron para hacer una mano. O sea, si ¿sí me entiende, como la mano del pintor. Pero, pero ya todo, todo lo complicado como que lo habían hecho y yo, a mí me entregaban un, lay, un layout muy, muy, podía ser súper escueto, podía ser súper elaborado uh -huh. y, y yo, pues, yo los pintaba, yo hacía la pintura final. Pero el proceso es súper bonito y de, de nuevo, supongo que si yo hubiera sido parte como del proceso desde el comienzo hubiera sido como más chévere, pero pues igual lo disfruté el resto. Margo Delgado dice Ayer compré un rosal para el jardín Y la variedad de la rosa se llama Botero Ah Tengo un jardín de rosas Llamadas Botero <risa> Pensé que me ibas a seguir No En el jardinero No uh, Elijah C.K. said Did you see the new Love, Death and Robots Is on Netflix now? No, 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 haven't. No, 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 no. I well, know that... we saw it's on Netflix now, but we haven't seen it. Yeah, no, no, no. Tonight, uh, we'll watch some of the uh, shorts. And Elijah said, this is looking airy and refreshing. The light is beautiful. Thank you. That's the whole purpose of it. And uh, Elaine Shukri said, Elijah, I have to agree. The lighting is really beautiful. Yeah, the whole painting is going to be about that. So there's, there's no... Mm, There's no point in, in, in wanting it to be more. No, it is, it is entirely going to be about that sense of atmosphere and lighting. So we have to um, kind of understand the uh, resolution of the painting based mm -hmm. on that. And not just based on, on like trying to paint like a nice face on, on this particular figure. Because I don't think it's going to have a face, by the way. Mm -hmm. I think it's just, it's going to be what you see here, which is... To me, it's a very, very sensible, like, figure. And it really feels like it's in, in this space. So I really feel like it's, um, it's doing its job, like, super well. The figure, not me. But... Mm. Vlog by Artistic Girl said, mm -hmm. hi, all. Hey, all. Hi, how are you? Eh... Uh... Roslyn said, LOL, OPL humor. I don't know what it means. I-Y-K-Y-K. -Y -K. I don't know how to say that. ¿Qué es eso? What? I -Y -K -Y -K. I joke? I joke, like joke, joke. I joke, I joke. No, because it's I-Y-K-Y-K. -Y -K, so, I joke, joke. No? Y Yeah, maybe. I'm just, I'm not getting context, so maybe I don't know. Mm. M. A. dice, en Europa, las guardillas solían ser lugares para guardar cosas o habitaciones de las personas del servicio. Hoy se reforman para alquilar o como Airbnb, pero suelen ser espacios muy pequeños. Eh, sí, incluso, pero es que no, este era como un apartamento pequeño que tenía además una guardilla porque era o sea tenía las escaleritas que ese era el cuarto pero no era que solo la guardilla era el apartamento no 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 lindita pero eso fue eso lo hicieron posterior o sea nunca estaba diseñado ese espacio como para que hubiera un piso pero entonces la distancia piso. de techo a piso sería ah, es, no y grande, grande era grande sí 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 este es grande lo que pasa es que cuando lo dividen en dos pues ya 
eh, la parte de arriba uno le toca entrar agachado. Sí. Pero, pues si eso fuera solo un piso, pues sería súper alto. Sí, de no, techo y a era piso. un espacio que le... O sea, tenía... Tenía co cocina, cocina baño, baño, sala, todo, comedor... Todo súper... Sofa, cama... Todo, todo súper como... Hecho todavía... Ay, pero me parecía, me pareció divino. A mí se me hizo perfecto, estaba sí. perfecto. Y tenía unas ventanitas divinas, Las como ventanas, entraba, entraba una luz. Sí, no, pero digo, las del otro lado, las de al lado de las escaleras, que eran unos cuadraditos... Sí. Ay, divinas. Y, y sí, las que tú dices, entraba una luz espectacular. Increíble. Sí, o sea, sí, es sí. que esta luz, esta luz que, que estoy pintando aquí es como de las luces más chéveres que uno puede pedir como pintor. Oh, Elijah C.K. said, I Y K Y K. If it? you know, you know. Oh. And Rosalind said, If you know, you know. Oh, dude, oh. no. It's so lost on us. Yeah. We were, I joke, joke. I joke, joke. <laughs> oh, Y K. Y K. I don't know why I was thinking J K. ¿Qué dije yo? No, no, no. It was y on K. me. It's on me. It's on me. It's just um, hard to pay attention. It's hard to. Pay full attention when, to when me. sometimes I'm not. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. No, IYK, IYK. Um, Roslyn said, so the other day I tried something I've never done. Okay. I tried a video game. Guess Good. what game I tried to play? Oh, I Cuphead. No. Was it Cuphead? That's not, that can't be your first video game. Why not? Well, it's not a very welcoming first video game. It is, because you don't have to, ma like, you don't have to use your camera. And then you, you, you never play it again. No, you're gonna uh, build your endurance. No, so hopefully video it wasn't games. like a um, new controller video game. So the SpongeBob new, game. By new, I, I mean like the controllers that have been out for quite a while, but, um, You know, Danny still struggles with camera. Sometimes. In the, in those controllers. The ping pong game we were playing in the iPad. Yeah, but... I'm trying to to guess. Oh, yeah, you're just saying, well, you're, you're yeah. just saying games. Hopefully it was, a, a, you know, like a platformer, like a 2D platformer, something like Mario-like. Aladdin from SNES. Oh, no way. No, 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 I'm trying oh. to guess. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, yeah, but that one's tough. Mm -hmm. That That's not an easy game either. Mm, Elden Ring. What? No, I'm trying to guess still, Nicolás. Yeah, I'm playing the game. <laughs> uh, Julia said, ha, 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 I yolk, I yolk. There we go. Yeah. Rosalind. What? Elden Ring. Oh, dude, no, no. Rosalind. I mean, I love you, but no, that's not. like. Yeah, that's like saying... Like, I play hmm. Soulsborne games because I've played like every one of those, all of them. That's a hard one. But no, you can't start with that game. Well, you can. I mean, you can. I mean, yeah, sure. I know how. Sure. Yeah. But that's, yeah, that's not an easy game. It's like, it's like saying... super. Well, well, you know what? It's probably the best game, the best uh, Soul Series games to start with. Because the other ones are so cryptic. The other ones... You know, or, or, I mean, this one, maybe for you, it's like, what am I doing? Like, what is happening here? Come on. But, um, yeah, but trust me, the, if you're getting that sense, the other ones would have been worse. Mm. Roslyn said, my kids told me I couldn't do it. My son told me like Zelda. Um, Robin said, yeah. my son started me. Uh, with Zelda and Hollow Knight. Okay, so well, Hollow Knight is tough. Zelda, I think it's oh well, but the the um last Zelda uh would be tough too because that's open world. That's like open open world. So you probably benefit from like a uh, smaller Zelda, but Zeldas are amazing. And Rosalind said, "But I spent three hours getting killed. It was fun." <laughs> Okay, no, if you enjoy it, that's yeah. awesome. And Marcelo Peralta said, Elden Ring was my first Souls game, but I played other RPGs already. Yeah, I know. And it was still very tough. It is. It is brutal. Um, mm, Liad said, Rosalind can play the, vi play the violin or cello. She oh, can they, learn Elden oh, Ring if she yeah, you can has make, the patience. You can, you can make music for Elden Ring gang. <laughs> 
Or you can do music while you're getting uh, yeah. killed music, in music Elden in, Ring. Music in Souls games is really good. Mm. Elijah was asking uh, Rosling, oh, nice, how is it? So what's your take? Let me hear you, um, Rosling. Graphics, what do you, what do you 10 think? out of 10. Well, I think they're cool. They're I mean, if cool, it's but if it's not. Rosalind's first game, right? I mean, I would be like, "What is this?" Yeah, but there are other games that yeah, you go like, better. "Oh my god, what is this?" But it, think about it as your first game. It would be it would be cool. Like the the character design is you know as good as as you could ever ask for in a video game. So management, no what <laughs> controls. Of the game, yeah. Difficulty, ten out of ten. Yeah, they're in a little super, bit. Yeah, you have to multitask a lot. I feel so. If you're not used to it, there's there's a lot of things. Mm, Rosalind said, "My whole family sat around me, watched and laughed the whole time. They had more fun." Oh, oh that's, that's cool. Oh, that's yeah, good. I, yeah, I, I yeah. love that. I love that. And did you like Elden Ring, a family game? Did you, <laughs> did you like uh, playing video games? Is this like the start of something of uh, magical friendship? for you? Mm, Rosalind said, "I'm such a newbie, but I've seen all the games my kids have played. This game looked like fun. The art and music is really cool. It's amazing. It's really amazing. I am." Um, Rosalind, I'm over a hundred hours in, um, kind of cheated because I found a way to soul, to farm souls and I thought I was above it and I'm not, I'm so not. So, uh, I started farming souls like a maniac. So I think I played, uh, fairly until like soul level 90 something you know that was my natural progression and uh right now i think i'm like 121 <laughs> it is it is i think crazy I did, yeah 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 it's it's um uh, i'm embarrassed but i think all afternoon yesterday and um uh, at night a little bit maybe a little bit of this morning just uh farming Riley Doyle said, this is awesome. Long time watcher of the channel. First time catching a live stream. Oh, dude, awesome. Got you in the studio while I'm working on a little painting myself. Awesome. Your That's... piece is looking beautiful, Nicolas. Thank you. Thank you. We always say that the best, um, the best way we think about the streams that we do is... As company. You know, yeah. As if this was... Uh, just a, a classroom and we're all just working on our own paintings or like a studio space and mm -hmm. everyone's working away on their own paintings and we just talk about stupid stuff and um uh, but everyone's kind of working and i think that that's the the coolest way to imagine um just uh, this virtual space elaine shukri said i reckon the best Open world is The Witcher Wild Hunt, mm. but I started off on Diablo. Oh, um, yeah, a lot of people say that. I, I have, you know, I've never played, I think I know, I, I started Witcher uh, only one time, yeah. I'm not big on open open world games that are that big, like um, Elden Scrolls or stuff like that. I just don't... Uh, I just I'm I'm not super big on that. Um Elder Scrolls. What did I say? Why did I say Elden? Everything is Elden now after El Elden Ring. Um yeah, but this cuz cuz um well, this is the first from software open game, so open world game, so that made it different. But I'm I'm more what's the biggest open game that I've played? I don't know. I'm more into like uh you know, open game is in Spider-Man. Yeah, or or like the uh, Miles Morales game, or like um, even like Cyberpunk. I played like fifty hours of Cyberpunk. I actually played it in the computer, and I really liked it. To be super honest, um, what else? It what says open... the that the biggest one right now. It's called Star Citizen. Okay, yeah, but that's not yeah, that's not fair. That's and No Man's Sky. 
Yeah, but those are like um, No Man's Sky is like proce procedurally generated. So dwarf you know, fortress, fortress. I have no idea what that what that one is. Uh, and then Minecraft. Okay, yeah, but those are those are not designed open games. Elite dangerous. <laughs> Now we're just saying games. Um, yeah, those are not like designed though. So games that are designed are far cooler because like a human being has planned everything that you're going to see and the people that you're going to speak to and you know the quest you're going to go on so but there are other sort of games other types of games that they just you know uh, uh, AI just designs and levels and Elder Scrolls 2 Yeah but I've never played those no mm, The Lord of the Rings online Yeah but that's an MMO so that's different mm. I have to find one that you've played. No, but not big ones. I, it's just too overwhelming for me. Asheron's Call. No, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Final Fantasy I 15. Played some, I've played. Oh, I started that one. Never finished. Um, no, that's 15. Is 15? No, that's 14. 15 is the last one. Just Cause. Okay, I know that game, but I don't. I haven't played it. True Crime Streets of LA. I have no idea what that is. Uh, no. Star Wars Galaxy. MMO. Mm, Fallout 76. Yeah, Fallout. I, Fallout the thing is, is I, I, I don't do, I haven't, I'm not big on like Bethesda games. So takes a lot of those out. Arma 3. Nope. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Not, no, not Assassin's Creed. Not an Assassin's Creed fan. They I started. Z? I started a couple. Never finished them. The Witcher 3. No, that's the one uh, she was talking about. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 5. I played a lot of hours of that game. Never finished it. Dragon Age Inquisition. I actually did. I actually finished mm, that. Finally. We found one. 45 square miles. We found one. We found one. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I actually played that. Yeah. And I remember when that one came out that they used to say, oh, don't spend a lot of time in that initial map area because it's just full of like garbage quests and you don't need to do any of that. And uh, just just progress the story. Just move for, like move further in the map. And I was like, hell no, I'm going to stay here because I was liking it because I didn't know what to expect. And I stayed there for like, I don't know, like 20 hours, probably more than that, just doing every single little quest that I could do. So it was pretty cool. I was kind of over leveled when I kept playing the game, but I liked it. Don't ask me what happened in that game because I don't remember anything. <laughs> oh, you, you know what I remember? It. You know what was sucked? What? Sucked. Because I had, I had that for the uh, PS4, mm -hmm. which it, like, it played it horribly, by the way. But I remember getting to the final boss and it glitched and it stayed still. No. So there was this huge buildup because I remember you had to like maybe go up a tower or something. I remember going up. Like, and did it like up. auto save? No. No, it just stayed still. <gasps> and I was like, what? Why aren't you moving? No. And it just stayed still. So I just, you know, hit him and, and he died. And I was like, okay, this is the worst thing ever. No. I, I probably could have just saved and then restarted if i wanted like like the whole experience yeah but you know it's the end of the game i was yeah. like i can be cheap at the end of the game that's fine but again don't ask me um don't ask me how i did <laughs> i had sex in the game mm -hmm. you can have sex in that game mm -hmm. Th that's what um those um those games are known for like you can actually build a relationship like the one of um punk Cyberpunk, yeah. Cyberpunk. Yeah, it's almost like exactly the same. Mm -hmm. You have to work like really hard to, to you know, on your relationship with whomever you're going after. Mm -hmm. And um, you, so just, you have to answer the right thing. You just said that and now a bot is here. Really? Yeah. They heard me. Yeah. What I mean, they maybe they're listening to... No. Uh, keywords? Keywords and they're like, yes, we fit here. <laughs> But... uh. No, in that one, I forget, I forget. And it's very, I mean, it's not, it's never graphic. It's always like super suggested. It's, um, what's cool is that it can be um, 
same sex it could be creatures you could do like different um uh different species i guess or different mm. yeah 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 you can have you know relationship with whomever you want so Weird. It's, it's pretty no 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 i know it sounds like creepy maybe it is maybe it is no maybe in words it is i mean if you're playing it oh it's creepy it's a probably. game so like oh what are you trying to do no don't say it Rosalind was saying, I'm getting the hang of the camera. It's hard. It is. Um, Marcelo Peralta said, I played AC Valhalla before the Elden Ring. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel as beautiful, but once you get used to Elden Ring, if is very nice. Yes. It's just more subtle. Other yeah. games are too flashy. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy the flashiness of, of other games, but... What what have you liked? You know, of the games that we've played, which one have you been like, oh my god? With the graphics? Yeah, visual or or Cuphead. Not graphics, but visually. Cuphead, Cuphead. is it's just it's a, like yeah, Cuphead is is perfection. Another level. Yeah. yeah, it's like art. It is. It is. I mean, all just video, art. all great video games. No, no, no. Art. Yeah, I know, but it's like you could like every uh, you can pause the game in every. Like every second. Yeah. And you can just admire everything they did. Yeah. I just love it. It was one dude and and uh, I told you, I think, if I'm not mistaken, his wife did the uh, backgrounds, which I adore in that game. Yeah. So they were together. It's They're two happened. brothers. If I'm not mistaken, they're two brothers and uh, one of uh, the brother's wives. So they were three. Well, I think eventually there were more people, but you know the the core team is is them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just trying to say not them two and the wife, but them three. You oh, know. Oh, I said and because yeah, the yeah, two yeah. brothers. Yeah. Plus, plus, mm -hmm. I'm not saying and as in like, you know, uh, as if, if as if she's doing less. No, no, no. In fact, that what I said at the beginning was that I absolutely adore the backgrounds, and she does the backgrounds. So. She does like watercolors for all the backgrounds. Yeah, so. they are so talented. Yep. So, so, so talented. Yeah, that one's, that one's amazing. Um, Liat said, yeah, the camera is the real boss of the game. Yeah. Uh, Robin said, haha, I did that for Zelda. Zelda Breath. Breath I of have, the Wild, yeah. I have found a walkthrough for top weaponry and food. Marked it on the map. Always have a reserve. A reserve now. Yeah. So you're farming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for Zelda, I don't know if you could farm in Ze for S Zelda. I mean, I guess if you make recipes that can help you, probably. Yeah. Roslyn said, I'll be proud if I get past the castle deal. I mean, oh. I'm really bad. Yeah, it's going to uh, be a little tough, the castle. There's a couple of things that you can do to make it easier. I'm not going to spoil you if you don't want me to spoil you. But um, for me, it was uh, one of the summons that you can not not the summon like summon a um, like a um, co-op play summon because, you know, Elden Ring, when it gets difficult, you can just summon somebody and they'll help you out. Like, that's what I do when I'm having a lot of trouble. I'll mm. summon somebody and, you know, between, between the two of us, we'll we'll kills the monster and that's and sometimes fine. you help also the people well, that i tried i started summon. doing that but i i'm i'm still still not good at it though but uh um i mean it's a, it's ridiculous to say i'm not good at it and i'm like over 100 hours into the game but that is the truth about those games margo dice sabían que la hija del actor robin williams se llama zelda, se llama zelda por el mm, videojuego sí, sí. se llama zelda um roslin said Liad, I got killed from behind so many times. Now I'm a lot faster. I oh, run. Um, yeah, this is one of those games that you, you know, this is not something that you could do in the other games. Um, but in this game, you can just, if you if it's too tough, keep going, keep running. I mean, there's going to be moments where you have to fight. But a lot of the, uh, a lot of the enemies, sh if you don't want to fight them, you don't have to fight them. Mm, Elan Shukri 
Elaine, Elaine Chukri mm -hmm. said, Witcher is easy to play and enjoy the storyline. Did you enjoy the Lost Ark by Amazon Games? Lost Ark, no. Or maybe he was asking to somebody who was playing it, but I haven't played it. Lost Ark, no. Uh, is that the MMO of them? or No, they don't have an MMO. Or is it an MMO? Maybe it is. I don't know. I'm going to search for it and I'm going to let you see it. I think it's a I I think I know which game that that is. They were like pushing that game quite a bit. This um, one? Like Oh, no. That doesn't look like the game that I was thinking. That looks like Genshin Impact almost. Oh, no. I have no idea what that game is. Look. Yeah. That's like a big boob like Bayonetta-ish character. Mm. Julia Tovar dice, mm. como God of War, ese me gustó. Amo God of War. Ese, mi hermana también lo jugó con eh, Susan. Sí. Sí, 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 ¿te acuerdas que nos dijeron? No, están jugando Spider-Man, no sé si God no, of War. No, Spider-Man, Spider-Man no lo regalaron a nosotros. Sí, sí, pero lo están jugando también. No. Creo que sí. No, ellos no han jugado Spider-Man. Sí. No. Nope. Sí. No. Nope. Después les pregunta si verás. No, God of War no está. ¿Cuál fue el que ellas? jugaron? Entonces uno que es como de suspenso que tú Ah, Last of Us. Ah, Last of Us. Pensé que era God sí. of War. Pero eh, Julia, yo soy un fan así, o sea, absurdo de, God, de of God, God of War. Sí, me encanta. Ahorita incluso cuando salió para PC lo volví a jugar y yo he jugado todos los juegos. O sea, me da hasta pena decir que desde los que eran de PSP todo, todos los jugué. No en el PSP yo nunca tuve eso, pero me acuerdo que para el Play 3 los sacaron. Y los jugué todos. Mm, Elaine Shukri said, Oh, Cyberpunk was good too, except for the initial crashing. Yeah, but can I be honest? Like, I didn't deal with any of that. Like, my computer is good. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. Um, and I had, like, a crash-free experience. Uh, buggy. I mean, there's bugs in every... Uh, in every open world game, but um, I liked it. I actually r really liked the game. I thought it was kind of, it just, it, it was as big or as open as you wanted it to be. So I think at some point uh, it was kind of easy for me. I don't know. The game was easy by the end, I feel. It was very easy for me and maybe for the character that I had made and how I played it. But I guess if you, You know, if you were in like Meta, uh, if you kind of like created this world and you wanted to play within some restrictions or that probably made it a little bit different. But for me, it was kind of easy by the end, I feel. Mm, M.A. was saying, do you know the game uh, Gris? Check it out. Yeah, I've seen it. Very nice. Beautiful game. Mm, Robin said, Bob says we're all getting these bot hits because of what of our WhatsApp share at the workshop. <laughs> That sounds weird if people don't know. But yeah, maybe because of the paintings. Or maybe because of, um, I don't know, our conversations. Because I'm trying to know why we're getting bots. It's not like... Oh, just because. Don't worry about it. Don't even think about it. Uh, Julia yeah. was saying, can you type the name of that game you were talking about, Danny? The one with the two brothers and the wife? Yes. Se llama Cophead. Cophead. Yeah. And it's finally, I think finally this year, yeah, they're going to have so. the... No? No, I don't think so. The Chalice everything, version? Everything Microsoft is no. taking so long. I don't think they're going to have anything for this year. Don't say. Yeah, it's very sad. ¿Te gusta mi no diga? No diga. Don't say. Nosotros tenemos eh, muchas traducciones así que usamos eh, entre nosotros. Sí. Los pájaros. Sí. Uh, How is it dancing? ¿Es como le baila? Sí. No, it says here, look, Cuphead. I know. June 30th, mm. 2022. I don't know. I think it's going to be delayed. Please, I want it. We had a lot of fun oh, when we played yeah, that Well, one. 
fun, but yeah, it was very challenging. Well, but it's the same thing that when you play Elden Ring. Oh, you're like, oh, I know. Sort of, and then you're like, I want to play more. I love it. Yeah, it's a different so. sort of challenging. And and you're so much better than me at, at those that um, like I can understand why you kind of feel it's that sort of challenge that you can overcome. For me, it's like too much. I'm not as good as you in in platformers. No, not even close. Mm. Thank you, but I no, don't no, think no. that's. You, you, you just have like the thing is you don't um, stress. You don't tire. No, you you do stress, but you don't tire easily. Like if you if you die, you're like, come on again, and then come on again and again, and you try to learn. And you're super good. Like you have like the best attitude that's needed to progress in a video game. I have that attitude, but you know, in the tenth time that I'm, it's like with Elden Ring. If if I have to fight a boss, like what, fifteen times, I'm like, forget it. Like mm -hmm. I I have to call somebody else. I have to call for some help, or I have to I have to do something. Yeah, the thing is that I enjoy playing, even if playing means uh spending all the day playing the same level again yeah, and again and that. again yeah. you're like no i don't want this level i want to continue and i just like enjoy playing period yeah yeah you so, you you have the the perfect perfect like attitude for uh for overcoming those things thank you and me i'm the perfect quitter for those things because <laughs> i don't i it dri they drive me crazy Robin said, I'm getting daily invites to Bitcoin workshops. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's a joke. Uh, mm, Yuan said, of course you can farm in Zelda. The best healing items and also weapons. Um, yeah, but weapons I kill all the golden Lynels. Yeah. To get the bigger weapons. Those are like super tough to kill, like bigger uh, enemies that are lions. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But the thing with Zelda is that your weapons degrade, which is not cool. It's never cool in a video game. Or sometimes you love a weapon and then you can use it until it breaks. Elden Ring, um, not Elden Ring, uh, the Souls games used to be that way. You had to repair your weapon constantly. Uh Julia dice, gracias Dani. Oh, Cophead es todo, re todo retro. No me sí. lo imaginé así cuando hablaban, se ve genial. Sí, es, es increíble. Literalmente como animación de los 30 Sí, de pero pronto. muy bien hecha. Muy lindo. So, Daniel Ira. Ah, uh, we're almost down. I think so. Uh, ah, so. so, let me remind people again. I'm gonna comment it. Again, uh, so maybe if you just joined the live, our live stream, <laughs> the live, uh, this painting is going to be a gift to the person that donates uh, the biggest amount and sends uh, send us a screenshot yeah. of their donation to my Instagram. So you can still do it. And I think we're going to check that. Because uh, you said that we shouldn't yeah, we'll, read it. We'll contact people because we don't, we don't know what we're going to get. So so let's say uh, until what time? Because maybe if people are right now and maybe if they say, oh, I want to donate, but I am not in my house or I'm driving or whatever. Uh, tomorrow morning. We'll, okay. Well, tomorrow will. Oh no! Cause no. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. No, but I say like, when the are we gonna check the messages? Cause the donations are open until today. Yeah. So tomorrow. No, me entiendes. Hasta cuando pueden donar. So until today, and we'll check them tomorrow. Okay. So we'll 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 um contact the person tomorrow. Okay. Yes. So you can I think donate. That gives, you know, enough time for the people. Yeah, you can uh, donate today. Yeah. Until it finishes and just send me a DM with the screenshot, like a private message. 
and uh, we'll choose the winner. Yeah, and again, this is not, it's not a competition. It's not about who donates the more, like the, the most amount of money. It's, um, no, it's, it's, all, uh, it's all a good cause. Uh, it's all a good initiative. Um, if you're not fond of this particular painting, no worries. I, put, I actually think it's super cool, but you know, it's my painting. But um, if you want to look at other paintings that are available, uh, please visit uh, Broco's uh, site and, uh, and check his Instagram also. Because uh, I know that they have paintings that are for sale that um, a lot of artists have donated, particularly the paintings that they were doing in their live session. I know there are for sale too. I know Broco is giving uh, raffling uh, uh, some of his art also uh, mm -hmm. amongst the uh, people that donate. So um, we are part of this uh, initiative, but... Broco is the one that's um, organizing everything. So please, please, please uh, go check his, uh, his channel out and check all that information there. We were super happy to say yes to, to um, helping out. But, um, but all this stuff is, you know, is being organized by, by them on their end. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we, uh, we'll contact the person uh, tomorrow. And honestly, if somebody, if, if, you know, nobody donated, but I hope that people donate. But if if there was just one donation of ten bucks, then you know, you thank it. you, thank you for those ten bucks. That's amazing, and you're gonna get this painting. Yeah, and, and also uh, I was gonna say yes, uh, that if for example there are uh, four donations, yes, and the four donations are of ten dollars. Oh, we'll just we would a, just raffle it. Yeah, we'll just trust us. We we are super transparent with those things and and we'll just pick a winner at random and, yeah. and we'll contact the winner so and thank you again for all the people people that are that already donated yes. or that are going to donate yes. in the rest of the 9 hours i just saw there there are 9 hours left okay so you have some time if so, you if exactly. you thought about it but you know maybe you're not home you're not in your computer uh uh you know you have a bit amount of time so think about it um if you do so thank you so much it's uh it's a great initiative so um yeah so that's gonna be it for us and and yeah. check the um the ongoing streams if you go to Broco, broco's page it's like all the itinerary yeah he, he's got like a schedule for all the streams of today which is the last day so check those out it's it's really nice if you're working and maybe you want like a bit more company uh while you're doing whatever it is that you're doing uh, check those out, and and I'm sure you know you can you can kind of link those um, until you know the night. So thank you guys. Yeah, and thank you for being here again. We'll yeah. see you on Monday. Yeah. Have a great uh, weekend. Weekend, everyone. Yes. And we'll see you. Bye.